Hello everyone, my name's Ailabelle, and Miraculous Ladybug is a show that is very confused when it comes to time travel. Time travel is a fictional event used in stories that can make things super interesting, if done well. And I like time travel stories, when they are done well, but Miraculous Ladybug does not do it well. It's all over the place, and I've spoken about it a lot. In the span of two years, I have made nine different videos in which I have discussed the time travel in this show. Honestly, the TLDR of Miraculous's time travel problems come from Cat Blanc. And no, I will not shut up about it. That episode ruined whatever time travel consistency the show attempts to have. In any case, recently, I decided to officially end this saga after talking about the Miraculous World Paris special that came out not too long ago. And as of now, I plan to adhere to that. Whatever time travel shenanigans happen in the future in regards to Miraculous, and they will in fact happen, I'm sure it'll only add on to the confusion and only prove me right. I'd rather not beat this dead horse more than I already have. And so, in celebration of the end of this saga, I decided to make this compilation video of all the videos in which I have discussed this topic. Not only will this just be a convenient collection of my descent into madness, it'll also be kind of cool to see my earlier YouTube days with my rougher editing and aesthetic, all the way until nowadays where I'm slightly more competent at this whole YouTube thing. You'll also get to see the progression of my discoveries and opinions regarding time travel and Miraculous. So, don't get confused if I say one thing and then change my mind later on. After all, thoughts and stuff can change across two years. Before we get started, subscribe if you enjoy my content, like this video so that the algorithm will like me, and if you're willing and able, please click join and become a channel member for cool perks and to support me. And last but not least, put the umbrella emoji in the comments. And so, without further ado, I hope you enjoy my Miraculous Ladybug time travel saga. Now before anyone says anything, this is not, nor will it ever be, a Miraculous channel. Okay, yeah, I did say that and I still stand by it. However, there's a couple of things I still need to get off my chest about this show, so bear with me. Hello everyone, my name's Ailabelle, and today we're going to discuss the broken time travel system in Miraculous Ladybug. But before we get into that, if you're interested in story time videos or opinionated videos like this one where I rant or critique about cartoons and other things, then subscribe and ring that notification bell. I'd also super appreciate it if you left a comment and liked this video to let YouTube know that I'm not a terrible content creator. Merci! Now, before I give my thoughts on Bunnix and time travel, I also need to make something clear with you all. I, in no way, shape, or form have anything against Thomas Asterisk or Zag, nor do I want anybody to harass them or accuse them based off of points that I made. I critique things because I see their potential, and I'm disappointed when the potential doesn't get realized, if there is an illogical stream of events or thinking, or if an injustice has been made within the canon of a story. So, you know, keep things peaceful, guys. I don't need a mob with torches and pitchforks going after these people. I'm not here to judge their character, just the product that they make. That's what I do. It is just a critique, that's it. Also, also, fun fact, my last video where I accused Miraculous of ripping off Shugo Kara, and if you want to see it, check the description below. Please watch it, I worked really hard on it and I really like how it turned out. That video got put up on a Reddit page, which I totally didn't expect. However, unlike the comments on that YouTube video, the Redditors didn't exactly agree with me, which is fair, and low-key, they kind of accused me of being ignorant. Well, joke's on them, though. I know that I'm ignorant. Slap the title on a shirt and I will wear it. And by me, I mean my avatar here. Like I said, I never watched the show before. I could be completely wrong in everything I say, and I will own up to it. 
all of my miraculous knowledge is secondhand from spoilers on Instagram as well as fanfiction. Also, keep in mind the spoilers on Instagram are plentiful because of how the algorithm works. You look at one or two miraculous things and they just show you everything. So aside from some details, I am pretty well versed on this show. But anyway, what's more, I don't ever plan on watching this show. But that doesn't stop me from having opinions and impressions about it. So please feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. I'm just here to talk about a show and have a good time, okay? Okay. So with all that out of the way, let's talk Bunnix and time travel and why time travel is a broken ability in Miraculous. Alex Kubdel is a girl in Marinette and Adrian's class who, in the present, is not a Miraculous holder. But sometime in the future, she will be given her bunny Kwame, Fluff, who will transform her into her superhero form, Bunnix, who, with the power Burrow, is able to travel through time. Here's my first ignorant point. Isn't this power a bit OP? I mean, it's like a better version of Sass's second chance ability. If you could just go back in time, why does anything matter? You could theoretically go back in time and prevent any problems from happening. Heck, you could save Adrian's mom, or at the very least find out what happened to her. Or, they could use his ability to follow Hawk Moth, or Shadow Moth, or whatever Pokemon evolution he's on, and trail him back to where he came from and potentially discover his identity. Does this power have a limit? Does it have a weakness? Why didn't Master Fu use Fluff to prevent whatever tragedy befell his comrades when he was younger? Heck, now that Marinette is Guardian, what's stopping her from using Fluff to solve her and Paris' problems? It's not like she hasn't used other Miraculous other than hers before. Even if you put a limit on it, like, you can only use this ability once per day, that's still a lot of mileage you can get out of it. So, okay, we have time travel, fine, whatever. But what kind of time travel is it exactly? What time travel rules apply to this universe? From what I understand, there are two, or at least two, popular time travel theories. If time travel did exist, then it would likely follow one of these. Or not, who knows, it doesn't exist. But anyway, the first is multiverse theory, and the second is... Um... I don't know what this one is officially called, and I don't care to look it up. So, I'm just gonna call it closed loop theory. To explain the difference between these two, I'll use Dragon Ball Z to explain multiverse theory, and I'll use Sailor Moon to explain closed loop theory. These are two stories that understand what theory they are working with. By the way, spoilers for Miraculous, Sailor Moon, and Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball Z, there's an event that happens in the future that is super catastrophic and wipes out a good chunk of humanity. Trunks, the son of Bulma and Vegeta, goes back in time to try to prevent this event from happening with the hope that his future, or rather his present, won't happen and instead there will be peace. He goes back in time and warns the main characters about the event, which seems like it might do the trick. Ultimately, he succeeds in making the past peaceful. However, when he goes back to his own time, everything is still in ruin from the catastrophic event. Trunks learns that his timeline is different from the timeline that he saved. It's in a different universe. By making a change in the past, he created a new branch that will have a different future. Multiverse theory essentially says that every potential decision you make potentially branches off into a different future. Like your decision to drink coffee or tea right now. There's one timeline where you drink coffee and another one where you drink tea, and that single decision leads to a whole bunch of differences as time goes on. The butterfly effect lends to multiverse theory. In Sailor Moon, there is the future, which is nice and peaceful and everyone's okay. And then there is the present where bad guys are still doing their thing. Sailor Moon's daughter, Chibiusa, or Rini, if you watch the English dub like I did, you know, the English dub from back in the 90s, not the new one. So yeah, her daughter, Chibiusa, Rini, I don't know, I'm just gonna call her Chibiusa because of a lot of people accept that name a little bit better. Even though I grew up with Rini. Sorry, I'm sticking on this point a little too long. Anyway, she goes back in time in order to get a thing to help out some unexpected trouble in the future. Without giving too many details, because I think I oversaturated the DBZ rundown, nothing that Chibiusa does affects the outcome in the future. A lot of shenanigans happen when she arrives in the past and it seems like her meddling could spell trouble for her future. 
but that's not the case at all. Everything that happens in the past, where she went, was meant to happen, and always leads back to the peaceful future she comes from. That isn't to say that the troubles that she was having in the future didn't happen, it's just that those things were meant to happen, and time travel is kind of tricky to talk about. But anyway, in the closed loop theory, all of the actions that happen in the present will lead to a fixed future, and that future can't be altered, even when time travel gets in the way. So, which of these two theories applies to Miraculous? At first, it seemed like it was a closed loop situation, where all events lead to the same future with adult Ladybug and Cat Noir and a new Hawk Moth. But then Cat Blanc happened, and things got weird. So, in the current timeline, Adrian is akumatized and becomes Cat Blanc and essentially destroys the world. That is in the main timeline. People die, and he is alone by himself for a long time. When I say that people die, I mean that Alex probably died too. So, if she died, how did she become Bunnix? If by some miracle she survived, did she just happen upon the bunny miraculous and give the ladybug and cat miraculous to two other people? Is that how Ladybug and Cat Noir exist in the future? I don't think the writers took it that far, or made it that dark. Then again, killing all of Paris is already pretty dark. But needless to say, Alex is definitely dead in that timeline. Therefore, Bunnix should not exist. But then, future Alex somehow does exist? But how? This would suggest multiverse theory, but if that's the case, how many different Bunnixes are there? Is there a team of Bunnixes scouting out the multiverse? How can she see across different universes? You could probably just say that's part of her miraculous' power, but still. If the events of a different universe don't affect her, why did she interfere in Cat Blanc? Sure, you can make the argument that she's a hero, so naturally she'd want to help people, even if they don't exist in her universe. Because she's clearly not from the Cat Blanc universe, because again, that Alex is very, 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 very dead. She's, she, she's, she's gone. She's blowed up, dusted, thanos whatever you want, whatever you want to say. It'd be nearly impossible for, for that Alex to be alive. So alternate universe Alex acted in such a way that if she didn't prevent Cat Blanc from happening, then the events of the future wouldn't happen, which is correct, unless it's a different universe. Okay, so here's how I know that the creators slash writers did not intend on making this a multiverse theory centered universe. The Adrian from Cat Blanc was left in a destroyed world all by himself. In a kid's show full of hope and where Ladybug saves the day all the time and undoes things and she tells him that she's gonna fix all of this, I don't think they intended to have Adrian stuck in such a bleak future without any friends or family, and I'm sh pretty sure at some point he'd figure out that it was his fault that all these- all these terrible things happened. Otherwise, he might just go insane again and do even crazier things. No. I'm pretty sure that Marinette went back in time and made it so that Cat Blanc didn't happen in any capacity, and that this disastrous future disappeared. Hmm. Me thinks the people over in the writer's room need to pick a lane. You can't have both theories working at once. Look, time travel is already a difficult concept to comprehend. Because it doesn't exist, it can kind of be imagined any old way, I guess, but it has to make sense. At least if you want readers or watchers to understand and follow what you're doing. This is a world with established lore and power sets and stuff. If you're going to introduce time travel, you have to commit to the rules you initially set. I know you guys just, and by you guys I mean the writers, you all wrote up Cat Blanc and thought it'd be super cool, like, oh no, Adrian gets akumatized and what? Oh, oh yes, Adrian and Marinette finally get together, and oh no, Hawk Moth finds out that Adrian is Cat Blanc, and oh no, Adrian destroys the world. Like, this is gonna be such a big event, but how are we gonna undo it? Let's get Alex involved, and Bunnix, and time travel, even though that kind of goes against some of the things we've previously established, but it's gonna be a cool episode, and people are gonna cry and go hysterical over it probably going to be controversial which would give us even more attention and blah 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 
they essentially, what it seemed like to me, they went with rule of cool instead of applying logic. And rule of cool is cool and all, but sometimes, especially when you're writing a story, you need logic so that you don't... What's the, what's the term? I forgot. I'm trying to think of on the fly here because sometimes I divert, diverge, diverge? Sometimes I go off script and this is me going off script. Suspension of disbelief, there you go. If you break the rules of your own universe, it breaks your suspension of disbelief. So you have to pick a lane. The closed loop theory does a huge disservice to the story. Because we know that Marinette and Adrian exist as superheroes in the future as adults, then there's no real stakes with the two of them. We know neither of them will die, and even if they do, they'll just come back. It looks like they're still close, so the tension of any emotional falling out is also kind of ruined. Paris still seems to be in one piece in the future, so New Hawk Moth hasn't done anything too bad. There are still questions regarding this future, sure, but it's still pretty mundane. Personally, if I were one of the writers in Miraculous, I would stick to the multiverse theory. You know, if you absolutely have to have time travel in this story, then keep with the multiverse theory. It makes the system a little less broken. Um, it's still broken. It's still very broken, considering how OP it is, but at least there's cool things you can do. Multiverse theory in Miraculous leads to dark implications, but at least things would make sense. And at least in this theory, the future could be anything and there'd still be tension. Heck, if they want it to, like, you know, get more views, more money, and all that fun stuff, then they could do some really cool things, like what-if stories using this multiverse angle. <sighs> Having said all that, remember that I am just an ignorant observer of this show with secondhand knowledge. The show could have 100% explained everything I mentioned and I could have just wasted my time. I don't know. I just wanted to get this off my chest. It's a time paradox. You know, it's funny. I've heard that term being thrown around for so many years regarding various stories that use time travel, but I never took the time to look up what that actually was. But thanks to Google, I now know. To summarize, a time paradox is an apparent or logical contradiction associated with how time works and especially time travel. And boy howdy, does Miraculous Ladybug have itself a time paradox. Thanks, Cat Blanc. Hello everyone, my name's Ailabelle, and today we're going to talk even further about Miraculous Ladybug's time travel system and potentially how to make it flow a little bit smoother. You guys are awesome, you know that? I've been getting a lot of engagement, as well as fun conversations, thanks to all of you. And I appreciate every one of you, especially for being so civil. Some of you really like Miraculous Ladybug and want to defend it. Some of you really like it, but realize its flaws and critique it. While others don't like it at all and contribute to the critiques. It's been fun hearing different perspectives. If it weren't for those conversations, I wouldn't have my topic for today. I was pretty ready to leave the time travel shenanigans of the show behind, but thanks to some awesome comments on a previous video where I discussed the broken time travel system in Miraculous, please go watch that video, I decided to make this follow-up specifically about Cat Blanc and how time travel is portrayed and how I feel events should have played out. Cat Blanc is not a perfect episode by any means. Like, I'm not even talking about just the time travel stuff. Granted, I think it had a good general idea, but the problem was that they tried to cram everything into one episode. It didn't even get a two-parter. The ideas presented would have worked best as a multiple-parter to allow the things that happened to be flushed out more and for the audience to fully process and enjoy what's happening. So cool ideas, bad horrible pacing. Not to mention that there was yet another reveal that was taken back yet again and the climax of the episode doesn't even make any sense, and I'll go into why later. The other big issue with Cat Blanc was how it portrayed time travel. Before this episode, it seemed like Miraculous Ladybug was operating under what I called a closed loop theory, which in summary is where the future is set in stone and no amount of tampering in the past will deter that future from happening as everything that happens is meant to happen. However, I forgot to talk about a third theory. Again, not to say that there's only two or three different time travel theories. Time travel doesn't exist. So who knows? And you know, when you're a writer, you can 
make whatever rules you want. My thing is that I just want it to make sense and be consistent. And Miraculous doesn't want to do the consistency thing, which is why I'm here. <laughs> anyway, the third theory I kind of neglected that I sort of put into subtitles was the Back to the Future theory, which is more likely what Miraculous is using. In this theory, popularized by the Back to the Future franchise, there is only one timeline, but that timeline can change based on interference in the past via time travel. So instead of creating a different timeline or universe such as in multiverse theory, the current one gets replaced by the new timeline entirely. I do think that this is what the writers were intending considering Bunnix was beginning to disappear in a similar way that Marty McFly was disappearing due to his parents potentially not getting together as a result of messing with the past. However, this is where the paradox comes from. Now, try to follow me on this because time travel is already confusing to talk about. So, Marinette writing her name on Adrian's present wasn't a distortion or change in the timeline. Bunnix might say that it was, the writers might say that it was, and the fans might say that it was, but how it was written, it wasn't. Marinette, on her own and without any time travel interference, made the decision to write her name on the present, which ended up leading to Paris getting destroyed, the moon getting half blown up, and many people dying as Cat Blanc goes crazy. It wasn't until Bunnix interfered with the past that Cat Blanc was avoided. Therefore, the actual distortion was Bunnix's interference. Had time travel not existed, Cat Blanc would happen. So, where's the paradox? Well, as I mentioned in my last video about time travel, because my last video was not the time travel one. But yeah, as I mentioned in my last video about this topic, when Paris got blown up, so did young Alex. If young Alex is dead, then there is no Bunnix. And remember, Alex died in the main timeline, the main timeline in which time travel didn't interfere with the past. And if we're going by back to the future rules, she shouldn't exist in the future if she didn't have a future to exist in, since there is only one timeline. See, I know, it sounds confusing, so I hope I'm conveying this well. It's like, okay, so in Back to the Future, spoilers for Back to the Future, by the way, if you've never seen the movie, um, in Back to the Future, you have the main protagonist, Marty. Marty exists in the future, or the present, because the movie starts in his present, but follow me on this. Marty exists in the future because his parents got together in the past. Well, duh, but again, follow me. But what if in the past, in the original timeline, by original I mean without any time travel interference, Marty's parents never got together? Marty wouldn't exist, right? There wouldn't have been a time where he could exist because his parents never got together. So then imagine that the Marty who never existed, came back to the past to bring his parents together so that he can exist. That doesn't make any sense, does it? It's a paradox. Likewise, Bunnix only exists because she caused herself to exist. There's actually a simple solution to this problem that I'm surprised the writers didn't automatically think about. Have someone use time travel to go to the past and convince Marinette to write her name on Adrian's present. That way, the natural timeline, without time travel interference, has Marinette deciding on her own to not write her name. This way, the actual future where Bunnix exists is meant to happen. But if an outside force tells her to write her name, then that would be a change or distortion that leads to the tragedy that is Cat Blanc. That is the proper way to utilize this time travel theory. That would fix the time travel contradictions. But who, then, would be the one to go back in time to tell Marinette to write her name on the present? Well, I'm glad you asked, my lovely bells. That honor would go to Bunnix herself. But Allo, Alex is supposed to be Bunnix because she's so trustworthy and responsible. She wouldn't go changing the timeline just to get two people together. True, adult Alex wouldn't do that. But what if it was teenage Alex? I don't mean current Alex, more like Alex in like one or two years maybe? 
After all, we don't know when exactly she started being a superhero. So here's how I would rewrite the whole Cat Blanc time travel fiasco. Alex, age 16 or 17, sees how happy her friends Marinette and Adrian are as a couple. She knew Marinette was in love with Adrian for years, so it's satisfying to finally make them official. However, she thinks about how much time and tears shed and shenanigans that ensued because Marinette struggled so hard to get Adrian to notice and fall for her. Almost like four or more television series worth of agony. And with her new powers of Burrow, she decides that it wouldn't hurt to go back in time to a point where it would make sense that they could get together. Nothing bad could happen, right? After all, Adrianette were meant for each other, and them getting together was more of a matter of when than if. What harm would it do to get them together earlier? It would make them both so happy. So, she remembers a time in the past when Marinette made Adrian a beret and figured that that would be the perfect time to enact her plan. So, she transforms into Bunnix, uses Burrow, and goes back in time to talk to Marinette and introduces herself as a younger Bunnix compared to the adult Bunnix that Ladybug met prior. She tells Marinette to write her name on Adrian's present. Marinette asks why, but Alex says to trust her. Marinette initially struggles with the idea of doing it, but does so at the last second while she's in ladybug form, and this leads to Adrian finding out her secret identity. Alex is very pleased with herself for getting the two together and seeing how happy they are. However, she starts to notice that her body is fading away slowly. She uses Burrow to see what might be happening. It's here she realizes that Cat Blanc happened and her past self and all of Paris perished. She is completely scared, distraught, and devastated. At first, she's in denial that this destruction happened because of one small change. Why would this happen? Adrian and Marinette are supposed to be together. Why is this happening? It's all my fault, she thinks to herself. She then realizes she knows what needs to be done. She goes back in time to right before Ladybug writes her name and tells her not to do it or else bad things will happen. Ladybug is even more confused because Bunnix just told her to do it. Bunnix says she was wrong and she learned how important it is to respect time and not to mess with things unless it's absolutely necessary. She said she had good intentions, but that's not always reflected in the consequences. Bunnix tells her she promises to be a better hero and that she'll always protect them in their happiness, just in a smarter way. Ladybug, still confused, smiles and nods. She agrees to not write her name and thanks Bunnix for the help. Alex then goes back to her own time, relieved that everything is back to normal. It's from this experience that she learns the importance of not messing with time travel just because she can. It'll only be used for emergencies and she'll be there for them when she's truly needed. And this is how adult Alex became so responsible because she messed up this badly when she was younger. This scenario also deals with the climax in the original episode. For some reason, Bunnix took Marinette to the future where Cat Blanc is to deal with the problem there. Sure, it led to cool scenery, a cool fight, and cool character development and interactions, but it was kind of pointless and a waste of time. All they had to do was correct the past, and Cat Blanc wouldn't happen. There would be no Akuma to purify. The future can't fix the past, it's the other way around. So it didn't really make much sense for Marinette to go fix the future because it has nothing... It can't fix the past, guys. It's, it's not how time flows. Time flows, you know, from past to future, not the other way around. So again, I, I see why they did it because it looked cool that you can see, you know, Adrian fighting Marinette really cool concept the execution not great i think there's a there's, there's there's a better way of doing this cat blanc storyline and having the two fight without you know messing up time or wasting time in this case by having alex go back to the past and correct her mistake then the cat blanc future goes away you know what this would also avoid Marinette being paranoid about her and Cat not knowing their identities. No exposure to Cat Blanc, no paranoia, and thus we'd be more likely to have a reveal, and Adrian slash Cat Noir wouldn't have to feel so betrayed by everyone else getting to know their identities except for him and Ladybug. 
And yeah, I know, the whole Cat Blanc thing is just adding drama, and drama is good for, you know, story development. It helps with engagement and people staying invested. I get it. Sure, okay, fine. If you wanted to go this route and make Marinette paranoid about identities, I think there's a better way of doing it than, again, messing with time and wasting time. <laughs> there's, there's a better way of doing it. This was not it. So, you see now how one change could make the paradox go away, right? I'll admit, I've heard some of you come up with some really cool theories as to how Alex could have possibly survived Cat Blanc, and I do legit think mostly, if not all of those, would have been better than what the show gave us. However, at the end of the day, the easiest and least complex way of going about it is having someone from the future convince Marinette to write her name. This way, the Back to the Future theory makes sense and its rules are preserved. So, what do you guys think? You know, I was gonna come on here and bag on Miraculous Ladybug for yet another time paradox that I noticed in Cat Blanc, and I was so ready to do that. But before making a fool of myself, I watched a quick 30 second clip, with the sound off of course, because I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally watch the show properly. I watched the 30 second clip to confirm the paradox, and to my surprise, the paradox that I thought existed didn't exist, and the show actually addressed it. So kudos to you, Miraculous Ladybug, you got something right. However, you're not off the hook, because after revisiting that thought a week later, I discovered there is a paradox in that exact same scene. It's just a different paradox, and it's kind of messed up. So, at the end of Cat Blanc, the ladybug that went to the future to stop the past, yeah, I don't know, time traveling rules in this show don't make sense. Check out my past two videos about this. The ladybug that quote unquote fixed everything went back to the past and stopped a third ladybug from writing her name on Adrian's present to prevent the bad future. She then does Miraculous Ladybug and then it happens. The brutal erasure of a sentient, full of life soul, ladybug number three. She was just living her best life and then out of nowhere gets pushed out of the way by herself, gets her romantic plans foiled, and then a moment later, she doesn't exist anymore. Super messed up, right? But that's not the paradox. The paradox is that the second ladybug gets to survive. Like, how does that work? Ladybug number two's past doesn't exist anymore, so neither should she? Story-wise, I know she has to exist so that Marinette can be traumatized, but it doesn't make sense. Ladybug number three should be the one who stays existing, just in reality where she never wrote her name. At best, Ladybug number two could warn number three that something bad would happen if Adrian found out her identity accidentally and just left it vague. In that case, Mari can keep her paranoia and there won't be a paradox. Writers, please attempt to make sense with your time rules. I'm begging you. So let's talk about the season four finale. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell and the major events of Risk and Strike Back have been made known to me. I don't know all of the details, but I know just enough to comment on it. I wanna give a quick shout out to Klogami on Instagram for inspiring this video with a recent comic of hers. You should totally check her out as she makes funny comics about Chloe's mom, Audrey, and other miraculous stuff. Anyway, looks like Miraculous finally wants to get serious and do something exciting that'll move the plot along. Great! I applaud them doing something major with Hawk Moth and finally putting his arc in the endgame. It's like, two seasons late, but at least we got there. But Allo, what does any of this have to do with time travel and paradoxes that you discussed in your intro? Shh, we'll get there. Once again, Ladybug's crush on Adrian has gotten her into trouble by having her accidentally give the dog Miraculous to Felix, who then turned around and gave Gabriel access to every Miraculous in her possession, except for the cat and Ladybug. Oh, Mari, if you don't have some relationship development and deal with this crush now, you might very well destroy us all. And I gotta say, not the most dignified way for us as a species to end. Memorable, but mighty shameful. Anyway, we're left on a cliffhanger. Gabriel has almost all of the Miraculous that Mari was in charge of. What's gonna happen next? Well, if this were realistic, what would happen next is... Game over. Ladybug and Cat Noir lost. 
they lost, it's the end. Roll credits. I gotta say, it was risky making a children's show in which the bad guy wins, but hey, I don't personally think it's a good message to teach, but it is what it is. I wish Zag and Thomas Astruck all the luck in the world for their next show. Wait, what? The show isn't over. There's actually gonna be a season five. What do you mean there's gonna be a season five? Like, a full season season? Yeah, they already released episode titles and everything. Seriously? How? All right. Jokes aside, Gabriel should be the winner here. He has the bunny miraculous now, and he knows how it works. He has two options here. Use Burrow to discover the identities of Ladybug and Cat Noir and use that knowledge to get the miraculous, or he can rewrite history entirely and go back in time to before his wife got into her coma death and prevent her from using the peacock miraculous, or whatever happened to her. That's probably what happened to her. Anyway, heck, he could stop their past selves from even finding the miraculous. If his goal is to bring back his wife, he has the literal key in the form of a pocket watch. Whoever has the bunny miraculous wins this war. And I don't want anyone to tell me that Bunnix wouldn't allow this because her interfering wouldn't make any sense. It didn't make sense then, it doesn't make sense now. If the timeline we are currently watching is the true timeline, then if Gabriel used the Bunny Miraculous to change the past, then Bunnix wouldn't exist in the future. And they can't pull the whole Bunnix came back to fix a mistake that was never supposed to happen thing again because that would be lazy writing. The writers shot themselves in the foot when they not only introduced time travel in this show, but also when time travel is easy to access for anyone who has the Bunny Miraculous. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The Bunny Miraculous is overpowered. Gabriel wins. The fact that there is a season 5 is honestly kind of insulting, because if Gabriel's first instinct isn't to literally change the events that led to this madness, then my suspension of disbelief is truly broken without repair. And if they do pull something and somehow get Bunnix to fix all of this, or at the very least make her get the Bunny Miraculous back from Gabriel, then I'm sorry, there are officially no stakes in this show. There already kind of wasn't specifically because of the Bunny Miraculous and the quote-unquote guaranteed future that she comes from, but if she's the reason why everything goes back to being fine, then what even is the point? What's the point of anything here? What's the point of trying? Gabriel should honestly just give up because the universe is against him. If it weren't, he would have gotten the Bunny Miraculous before the heroes did. Honestly, if Gabriel doesn't immediately use the Bunny Miraculous in the first episode of Season 5, I can no longer take him seriously as a villain. Not that he scored that high to begin with, but you know. whoop de doo the love square is finally reversing, maybe. Who freaking cares? Nothing matters. <sighs> Do you know why time travel works better in other shows or movies? I'm not saying it's ever perfectly executed, but most of the time, unless the show is specifically highlighting the opposite for the gimmick of the premise, the act of being able to travel through time isn't easily accessible. Usually a complex series of events needs to happen so that characters can't spam this ability, or something is an obstacle preventing spamming this ability. You can't just do it whenever. There are a few exceptions in which characters can freely go through time, but that's usually when the show is about time travel and visiting different time periods to have adventures and stuff. Most of the time, however, and especially when the show isn't exclusively about time travel, when time travel is introduced, it is not easy to have or keep around. And in the few cases where it is easy to access, but the show or movie isn't centered around time travel, time travel usually has consequences that make it a less appealing option. These reasons, mixed with establishing fairly constant rules as to which time traveling theory you're working with, helps to create stakes as well as an interesting story. Miraculous Ladybug does none of these, and just goes for whatever will make their story cool. Come with May as far as logic goes, or lack thereof. Time travel is too easy to access. The consequences of using it are vague to non-existent, remember, Bunnick said that bad things can happen if you mess with time, but we haven't seen these bad things happen, so why should we believe her? And the time travel theory at play is inconsistent. Now, little kids watching this show probably won't catch on to these problems. I probably, no, I likely wouldn't either if I were a kid watching the show. I'm super analytical and picky because of years of directly and indirectly learning proper storytelling. In trying to better my own storytelling, I can't help 
but watch shows and movies in a certain way sometimes. That isn't to say that I can't turn my brain off when needed. If a show is entertaining and keeps my suspension of disbelief, I'm able to enjoy myself and mostly ignore the problems. Heck, maybe I won't even initially notice the problems. But when a problem is so big and annoying, I can't let it go because it's ruining the experience for me and I just end up sitting there festering in a puddle of annoyance and disappointment. Don't get me wrong, there is value in learning what not to do and we sometimes need those real life examples in order to grow. So, while I appreciate that valuable life lesson, at the end of the day, I'm still annoyed. Miraculous Ladybug annoys me for several reasons. I won't list them all as I have spoken quite a bit of my displeasure in past videos. I will give it to Miraculous that it has inspired my creativity and I'm thankful that God has introduced me to it because if he hadn't, I don't think my channel would have taken off so quickly. So, I am truly grateful to Thomas Astruck and Zag and everyone involved with this show. Regardless of things any of them have done or said, and regardless if I agree with choices that have been made, I am grateful. God has been good to me through Miraculous Ladybug. Having said that, this show could be so much more. I bag on it because I see its potential and one of my pet peeves is when stories I consume or know about don't live up to their potential or if they don't properly develop something that was being built up to. I recognize that no story will ever be perfect and I don't expect every show to cater to my headcanons and whims. I just want things to make sense, align with my morals, and have satisfying closure. Miraculous already has things that don't make sense, so I'm not confident about its eventual closure. Many people like this show and think it's a fun time, and some don't even notice the problems. To those people, I say, I'm glad you're enjoying the ride. Please don't let people like me or others take that joy from you. But to the many of you who have detected the faults of the show and continue to watch it, to those who love it but acknowledge it as problems, and to those who used to love it but don't anymore, I am so sorry for how this journey has gone. I'm watching the ride from a distance with my HD binoculars, but you guys are experiencing it. You guys are strapped in and holding on tight amongst the slow inclines, furiously fast drops, and every turn and loop. I know that whatever decisions get made, you guys are the ones who will be affected, not me, because I refuse to get involved. You could make the argument that I'm already involved, but despite my ranting, I'm nowhere near as emotionally invested as you all are. So, I salute each and every one of you. I'm personally not interested in putting myself through all of that, and I still refuse to do so. Just call me the crazy lady who reviews Miraculous Ladybug without watching the show. At best, I'll maybe watch the Awakening movie when it comes out, purely out of curiosity. Then again, I'm gonna kind of break the meme I made for myself, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I can't even guarantee I'm gonna go watch it. That's just a, that's just a loose maybe. But what I will do is I'll continue to absorb the ongoings of this show via Instagram spoilers and fan comics and the occasional skim through the wiki, but that's it. So, after all of that, I can't wait to see how Gabriel won't take advantage of his instant win card and how he'll continue to make dumb decisions that will inevitably lead to his downfall. But what do you guys think? No Miraculous is an exact copy of another Miraculous, but I don't know. With the concept of the powers they are going for in the show, I'd expect everyone's powers to be super distinct from one another just like in other superhero or magical girl shows. like. I don't want one Miraculous to be able to accomplish a task in the same way or almost the same way as another Miraculous. It just feels less unique. Oh, and the Bunny Miraculous sort of cancels out the Horse Miraculous since Burrow seems to allow the user to pop in and out of whatever location they want. I could be wrong about that, but it just seems that way. Anyway, back to the topic. Speaking of the Bunny Miraculous, and I won't go into too much depth with it since I already done so three times, go check out those videos by the way, but it's stupid overpowered and way too easy to access. Literally at any point, well before the season 4 finale, Mari could have used the Bunny Miraculous to go back in time and find out Hawk Moth's identity. But Allo, Bunnix wouldn't allow that. You say that, but I didn't exactly see Bunnix in the burrow when Mari used it in the season 4 finale. So, technically, Mari could have done that. But Allo, vague consequences. Yeah, vague consequences are vague. 
Look, I've seen a lot of shows and movies with time travel, and I understand what the consequences could be. Butterfly effect and all that jazz. But we haven't seen such consequences in Miraculous Ladybug. But Ella, what about Cat Blanc? What about Cat Blanc? I don't care what Bunnick said. The first timeline we got in which the moon was partially destroyed and everyone in Paris except for Cat Blanc died was the original timeline that was meant to happen, and you can either agree with me or you can deal with it. I personally think time travel is not needed in this show, especially when it's already been revealed to us a while ago that Ladybug and Cat Noir exist as adults, and that the current Hawk Moth loses. When we have that kind of info, it kind of takes the tension away from current events since we know everything will be fine. As long as no one messes with the timeline anyway. Sure, the heroes still have to deal with a different holder of the Butterfly Miraculous, but at least we know they survive until adulthood to be able to do that. Sure, you can make the argument that characters other than Mari and Adrian might die. We don't know their fates, but come on. And unless Miraculous has a time skip and allows us to see the cast as adults for at least a full season, when Miraculous ends, it'll be on a cliffhanger since we won't get to see how the future situation ends, or if it ever ends. That aside, yeah, the bunny Miraculous is too strong and allows the heroes an instant get out of trouble free card by either using said Miraculous or by having Bunnix pop up whenever it's convenient to make things right again. I dislike the inclusion of this Miraculous in the story so much. The Ladybug Miraculous is also OP. A fully trained holder has the ability to create literally anything. If Mari ever wakes up one day and allows that thought to fully marinate in her mind, she could be virtually unstoppable. But even if we totally ignore that, Miraculous Ladybug allows her to fix anything and Akuma messes up and even allows her to bring back people who have died as a result of the attack. Um, consequences. Who needs them? And as for the rooster... For those who don't know, the rooster's ability allows a person to have whatever special ability they want. Look, you all know it's OP, I know it's OP, and I'm pretty sure Astruck knows it's OP too, cause according to the wiki, he said that while the rooster miraculous can give you any special ability or power you want, said power cannot take the form of a wish, like the ability to discover the identities of superheroes or recreate the world. I call shenanigans on that. But fine, even if I were to believe such a handicap existed for this Miraculous, all a person would need to do is be clever in their wording or idea of what kind of ability they want. Maybe they can't want or wish to find out people's secret identity, but they can easily give themselves the ability to read people's minds, the ability to see people as their true selves, the ability to make people tell the truth, etc. And for the recreating a world thing, I'm sure you can get clever enough to make that happen as well. So no, Astruck, adding that stipulation does not make this power less OP. You once again wrote yourself into a corner. The fact that Gabriel now has two out of three of these Miraculous and is still somehow going to lose baffles, exhausts, and disappoints me. Let it be for the record that Gabriel won't lose because he's incompetent. I mean, he is, but you know. He'll lose because the writers want him to lose. Regardless of logic, what the writers want goes. Huh, that's weird. What's this? everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and I never thought I'd be making a fifth rant video about time travel in this show, but my goodness does its inclusion in this show bother me. It's not even that big to the plot, although arguably it should be, no, arguably it shouldn't be in the show at all, but since it is, I gotta deal with it, and you gotta deal with it, and since we all gotta deal with it, I'd rather it be handled well. But, because this is Miraculous Ladybug, we can't have nice things, and so it's not. Having said that, thanks to this comment I got, I do need to amend the past comment I made. I said that the Cat Blanc timeline was the original timeline. That's technically incorrect, but also still kind of correct. 
Because of the episode time tagger, technically, the world's original timeline got altered back in ancient Egypt, in which case, the first episode of the show takes place in the second version of the timeline. But I'm technically correct in my statement because the timeline we have been watching is the main timeline from our perspective, since it's the only one we know. From episode 1 and on, this second version of the timeline has been the main one, and the one we're used to. So yes, it's the main timeline of the show, but no, it's not the original timeline. That's the correction. Does this revelation fix the Bunnix existing paradox? No. No it doesn't. Not at all. Check out my past videos as to why, but the Cliff Notes version is that Bunnix caused herself to exist, which makes it a paradox, and that doesn't make any sense. In fact, because of the episode Time Tagger, she should have stopped existing in the future when she was thrown back to Ancient Egypt, since the Ancient Egypt shenanigans led to Cat Blanc, which led to her younger self dying. Let me provide a visual. This is the original timeline without time travel messing things up. And it's the timeline before episode 1. Bunnix happens to come from this timeline. We never get to spend any time in this timeline because Time Tagger happened. Time Tagger sent Bunnix back in time to ancient Egypt, a place she was never meant to naturally be. This created a new timeline. This is the timeline we experience from episode 1 and on. The first timeline then should stop existing since this is not a multiverse universe, evidenced by Bunnix disappearing in Cat Blanc. This timeline becomes the main timeline because it's the only one we've seen and experienced. Without further time travel interference, Cat Blanc happens, which leads to a future where everyone in Paris is dead except for Cat Blanc. Alex is also dead, so she can't become Bunnix. And yet, somehow, Bunnix shows up from the future that doesn't exist anymore to ensure that Ladybug fixed the event that triggered Cat Blanc. And again, considering how fast we saw her disappearing in Cat Blanc, the episode, she should have disappeared shortly after arriving in Ancient Egypt by Time Tagger. This shows that the writers intended for a Back to the Future type time travel theory, but are doing it wrong. With Bunnix, who shouldn't exist, going back in time to prevent Cat Blanc, she created a third timeline. The third version of the timeline is what we currently have in the show as of the events after Cat Blanc. All of that was to say that Bunnix should have stopped existing thousands of years ago when her timeline got Thanosed by Cat Blanc, so it makes no sense that she can show up again. <sighs> if this sounds confusing, it's because the writers accidentally made it that way by not paying attention to the time travel theory they're working with. Again, the Back to the Future time theory. Not multiverse theory. If it were multiverse theory, Bunnix wouldn't have started to disappear because she exists in her own universe, but because she was disappearing, that means that it's one timeline we're working with here. Speaking of Time Tagger, can we please discuss this confusing mess of an episode? From really far away and without thinking about it too much, it's a cool episode that introduces not only time travel to Miraculous, but also introduces a new hero as well as the fate of our two main characters. But not only does the episode have confusing bits to it, but again, Cat Blanc destroyed the credibility of this episode entirely. Time travel still doesn't belong in the show, but it was less offensive then. Even though not really because the bunny miraculous is still OP. But anyway, here's my issues with Time Tagger. Ladybug has little to no problem deciphering Bunnix's message slash riddle and that's bogus. Other than because the plot slash writer said so, absolutely no one would think to check statues and artifacts to specifically check if they were hollow or not. There are quite a few things one would do before attempting that, but that's not at the top of the list. Gotta tell you guys, it's, it's really not. Considering the vast amounts of artifacts, why would she even think to check the oldest stuff there? All of the artifacts are old. It's so contrived. There's no reason why she should have solved the riddle so easily. Dig into the past could easily mean document researching or literally digging, not knocking on objects for hollowness. Also, since when can any miraculous other than maybe the fox create holograms? Why can the bunny miraculous create holographic messages? How does that work? What does that have to do with evolution or time for that matter? 
and don't come to me like, well, it's futuristic, so it kind of makes sense. No, 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 it doesn't. It does not make sense to this context. Also, also, how did Bunnick survive? Better yet, how does she remain young? It's not like she was a part of that statue. No, 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 she was in the statue. But Aloe, she was just in suspended animation. Okay, but two things. How was she in suspended animation? Either the bunny miraculous has an extra ability we'll never bring up again, or this was just not thought out. Gee, I wonder which one it was. And two, why was she in the statue to begin with? Did Time Tagger put her in the statue, or did she put herself there? I imagine she put herself there because she took the time to create the message for present Ladybug and Cat Noir. This circles around to her putting herself in suspended animation, but then again, how? Also times three, can we talk about the circumstances that allowed this broken miraculous to miraculously find its way back to the future Bunnix? Without using Burrow, she'd have to either know exactly who her ancient ancestor was, what they look like, somehow, without, you know, cameras existing in ancient Egypt, as well as having to know how to speak ancient Egypt, or she relied entirely on luck. She'd also have to explain the tradition of giving it to younger siblings to the ancestor in order for it to get into young Alex's hands. So anyway, as messy as Time Tagger is, I think there is a way to make it less messy. And you know what that means, it's rewrite time. I won't edit the whole episode, just the time travel bits. Here's the changes I'd make. Create bigger consequences for Time Tagger's interference within this episode. Not episodes later off in Cat Blanc when you forget that Time Tagger was as big of an influence as it should have been. Make it so that in the original future with Adult Ladybug and Cat Noir, there is a different Bunny Miraculous holder, not Alex. Alex doesn't exist in this timeline. Let's name this new Bunny Miraculous holder... Mona. Let's, let's name her Mona. Mona was part of Mari's circle of friends, and eventually earned the right to be the Bunny Miraculous hero. When the future Hawk Moth sends Time Tagger against the heroes, he sends Mona back to ancient Egypt. Because a Miraculous is broken by future Cat Noir, she can't return to the modern time. Mona has only a little bit of time before she disappears. She knew her being in the past and staying there would activate the butterfly effect. The future would change, but by how much? Unclear. She was scared. She knew she'd never see her friends and family again, but nevertheless, she had a job to do as a hero. Mona had an impossible idea. In desperation, she pleaded to her Kwame Fluff for help. The broken miraculous meant she no longer could see or hear her again, as she was stuck in her hero form, but she had to try. She begged and pleaded until exhaustion. Mona needed one last miracle. Suddenly, a tiny portal into the burrow opened up. The portal was too small for her to fit through, but it was something. With tears of hope and joy, Mona thanked Fluff for the last time and looked through the portal. She saw exactly what she wanted to see, her ancestor. Mona came from an Egyptian family and knew an ancestor had to be around somewhere, and now she knew what they looked like. For months, Mona searched for this individual, doing whatever she could to survive in this unknown time and amongst strangers who spoke a language she couldn't understand. During her life in Egypt, Mona writes two notes. One note is written to explain the bunny miraculous and how it works to her future ancestor, and the other note goes to the present Ladybug and Cat Noir, the present as in the one we see in the show, the teenage Ladybug and Cat Noir, that will have to deal with Time Tagger, and the note is also her apologizing to them for not being able to significantly help. The note also explains who she is and who she used to be to them because now she likely won't exist in the new future. Within the note, she also encourages the teen Ladybug. She knows that Ladybug tends to worry and doubt herself, so she tells her not to do that and that she'll grow to be a great leader and hero someday. So Mona tells her, don't stop trying. There is always a solution. Further on in the note, Mona requests that the one who delivered the note to Ladybug and Cat Noir be considered as the new Bunny Miraculous holder, since her blood would be running through them and it would be like she's fighting alongside them again. That last part of the letter was mainly to ease Mona's heart as her heart breaks as she longs for her old life. She also wants to prove that she once existed and had great miraculous friends. 
As time went on, her body began to disappear more and more. She had to wear a cloak just to conceal her nearly intangible body. Time was almost up. One day, Mona collapsed from a lack of strength. Her body was almost gone and she couldn't continue. She begins to cry. Suddenly, a kind person stops and offers her a helping hand. Mona looks up and sees that it's her ancestor. She gives them a weak smile. The ancestor is frightened at the sight of a disappearing human and is about to run away. Mona gestures and motions for them not to run. She weakly hands out the broken miraculous and the letters she wrote. Still wary, the ancestor doesn't take them. Mona says, please. Even though the ancestor doesn't understand the language, they somehow know what she wants. So they gently take the items. With a grateful sigh, Mona looks up at the sky and says, the future is up to you now. She gives one last bright smile, and then she ceases to exist. This note is kept with the broken pocket watch and passed down through the generations of Mona's family to be given to the youngest sibling when they come of age. So fast forward to the current timeline and Alex is a descendant of Mona. During the fight with Time Tagger, young Ladybug and Cat Noir are having a tough time, such as in canon, and Alex meets up with them at the museum. She delivers the note to them. They don't know Mona, but they sympathize with her story and they believe her. Ladybug is encouraged by the letter and motivated to win in order to avenge Mona, the friend she would never have. Alex mentions that her family has waited generations for Time Tagger to show up to help a ladybug and a black cat. It all sounded like insanity, like a fairy tale, until Ladybug and Cat Noir started saving Paris. She knows now that it's real and she wants to help. She knows of the bunny miraculous and what it can do. Since Alex is already Mari's friend and since Alex is personally involved with the problem, Ladybug lets Alex become Bunnix for the first time, and Bunnix helps Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat Time Tagger. Time Tagger, once his Akuma is purified, is revealed to be the future teen version of Chris, Nino's little brother. Bunnix wants to take him back to his time, but just as she's about to do that, future slash adult Bunnix comes in and says that she'll take it from here. And of course, the teens all marvel at her. Future Bunnix doesn't want to risk younger Bunnix seeing future things that she was not meant to see yet. Future Bunnix congratulates young Bunnix on a successful first mission, and she thanks Ladybug and Cat Noir for avenging her ancestor. Future Bunnix assures Ladybug that in the future, Ladybug is still a great leader. She might not have had to deal with the same problems as she did in the old future timeline, but she dealt with some pretty serious stuff. She tells all the young heroes that they've got this. They all promise to protect this new future, and they all pound it. Future Bunnix then returns to the future with Chris. Alex voluntarily gives back the bunny miraculous to Ladybug and says she doesn't trust herself enough with it yet. Knowing the future and messing with it and the past is too tempting. And after hearing what her ancestor Mona had to deal with, she was a little too scared to meddle. Cat Noir makes a remark that Ladybug was going to take the miraculous back anyway. Ladybug playfully elbows him in his side. Ladybug thanks Alex for the help and Alex thanks her back in return and says it was a cool experience and that of course she'll be there to help them out whenever they need her. Cue the end card. So, how was that? Did that fix the issues of Time Tagger? Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and I see no reason as to why Alia couldn't be Ladybug. Or rather, Scarabella, the main Ladybug miraculous holder. Quite literally, if someone went back in time and like, moved a rock in a different direction or something, I'm quite convinced that the butterfly effect would make it so that Alia is Ladybug in the current story. Alia is as decent of a person as Marinette, so I'm sure she would have saved Master Fu from getting run over. Honestly, this just goes back to one of my main points in an earlier video, go check that out by the way, of how weird it is that out of all of Paris, Fu chose who was apparently the only decent girl to not let an old man die. But Allo, if you saw the spoilers for the season 5 premiere, you'd know that Master Fu actually met the current Ladybug and Cat Noir back when he was younger due to time travel, which is why he chose Marinette and Adrian in the future. Hmm... Yeah, okay. We'll talk about this now, but only briefly because I have a bone to pick with the season 5 premiere and this isn't the place to address that. Riddle me this, Astruck. If you created the rule that people can't be recognized when they are transformed with their miraculous due to some magic mumbo jumbo, then how the heck can Fu recognize Marinette as Ladybug? At best, his younger self would know that he had a quote unquote reliable Ladybug holder to mentor later on in life, but he wouldn't know who was under the mask. 
unless you're suggesting that he can tell who's under the mask, but then that contradicts some info we've gotten in the past, and even that info was contradicted before. All I want is some consistency. That's all I ask for. Is it too much to ask for? I personally don't care which route you choose, just pick a lane. At the core, this is a cute idea of having a young Fu meet current Ladybug. It's honestly a very sweet gesture, but your sweet gesture is made sour by the lack of cohesion in the storytelling. Okay, so I know you're all expecting me to come on here and complain about how Miraculous Ladybug does time travel wrong. And it does. And how the time travel in the season 5 premiere doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't. But you know what? I'm tired, guys. I'm tired about ranting about the time travel in this show. I have talked about it to some capacity at least six times. Any criticism I have about it in the season 5 premiere is the exact same criticism I had on it before. Nothing was fixed. Believe me when I say that I had a pre-script prepared in which I ranted about everything wrong about the time travel logic in these episodes, and I was gonna get on here and spend way too long on a point that I already thoroughly made. Wanna know why the time travel in this episode doesn't make sense? Watch this video of mine. Wanna know why Ladybug and Cat Noir meeting past Master Fu shouldn't matter? Watch this. Wanna know how Gabriel could have won? Here you go. Wanna just listen to me rant about time travel? I've got gotcha, you, fam. It's done. It's over. After this, I won't address time travel in a miraculous again unless it miraculously gets fixed. But then again, it probably won't because Time Tagger and Cat Blanc ruined it. Having said that, I have one final thing I want to say about time travel in this show. In light of the season 5 premiere, something became apparent to me. I said in the past that Miraculous was operating under a Back to the Future theory of time travel, and I gave evidence as to why and how it definitely isn't a multiverse. However, given the events of Cat Blanc and now Evolution, I have had the revelation that Miraculous is actually attempting to do a closed loop time theory. If you want to know what that is, check this video. But the TLDR is that in a closed loop time travel theory, everything that is meant to happen will happen, including time travel. So, even if you think you're going back in time to change something, that was always meant to happen, and thus it can't be changed. Check out Sailor Moon, or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, or the episode It's About Time from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Does this particular revelation fix anything? No, because as previously stated, they're doing it wrong. The closed loop theory cannot coexist with the Back to the Future theory. Why? Because the Back to the Future theory states that changes to the past can create a new future. The closed loop theory states that the future will stay the same regardless of what you try to do. Hey guys, this is Aloe in the editing process. I want to make a correction about something. You technically can have the closed loop theory and the back to the future theory happen in the same universe, but it has to be done super carefully. The rules about when and how each apply have to be very clear. In My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, mild spoilers for that by the way, the episode It's About Time featured the closed loop time travel theory at work as Twilight Sparkle tried to use a time spell to go back in time and warn her past self about a tragedy that was about to happen. But it all ended up happening anyway. It was a loop. This episode told the audience that if time travel were to ever be used, this is how things would go. However, three seasons later, in the Cutie Remark, Starlight Glimmer vastly improved the spell that Twilight used and was essentially able to create a new spell in which she was able to go back further in time and mess with things that would end up creating a new future, thus changing things to a Back to the Future theory. I initially had problems with this because of the lack of consistency, but technically it can still work because the means of which time travel was used was different. One spell was not as powerful and only allowed a closed loop. It didn't allow the caster to change things in history. And it only allowed the user to go back a small period of time. But with the improved spell, such inhibitors were taken off and it allows the user to make changes and affect the future. 
With that logic, MLP did the two time travel theories just fine because 1. The ways in which each occurred were different, and 2. Time travel isn't something readily available at any time for it to become a problem for the rest of the show. Miraculous almost has the ability to do something similar. It has the Snake Miraculous and the Bunny Miraculous. The Snake Miraculous 100% operates under the Back to the Future theory, since the future can change based on past events changing, and the user can only go back a couple minutes, thus limiting its capability. However, the problem occurs with the Bunny Miraculous. At one point, it operated under the Back to the Future theory as well, given the Cat Blanc future and given Bunnix beginning to disappear. But, for no reason at all, evolution showed us that, no, we're operating under a warped closed loop. The problem is that the same means of time travel have two different outcomes, and that doesn't make sense. The Bunny Miraculous is inconsistent and works under whichever theory is convenient for the writers for the episode. Its lack of consistency makes it hard to know what to expect, and it just frustrates things because it doesn't follow a rule. So yeah, I just wanted to add that in. Back to the regular video. And yet, with Bunnix disappearing in Cat Blanc, of course I think it's the Back to the Future theory. But that can't possibly be the case because one of that poorly done Master Fu meeting the current heroes of Paris and supposedly being inspired to seek them out later on, which technically I can make an excuse for because the show doesn't outright say that he knew their identities for him to choose them in the future. But I think it's supposed to be implied that he always knew Adrian and Mari were the heroes he met in the past. Two, throughout the episode Evolution, we see time and time again the main characters seeing their future selves do a thing and them going to do that thing sometime later. And three, with all of the constant meddling throughout time, including Bunnix interacting with beings from the past, such as dinosaurs, which I feel is a huge no-no for time travelers, especially in the Back to the Future theory, and yet Bunnix and her future still exists in the same way. Since this future is so insistently constant, I can only assume the writers are attempting a closed loop theory. But LL, that doesn't make sense. A closed loop theory wouldn't allow Cat Blanc to happen. I know, it's almost like the writers don't understand how time travel is supposed to work. <sighs> I'm done guys, I'm done with it. Unless some big fix happens with time travel in this show, I'm not talking about it again. I might rant about it on Discord, which you should totally join the bell tower by the way, our community Discord, link in the description. And I might make a video talking about the consequence of time travel, but I won't directly criticize the time travel anymore. Are we clear on that? Cool. But if I do happen to talk about it at least one more time in this video, I'm still within the realm of this being quote unquote the last time since it's in the context of this video, which is the last time. Anyway, hello everyone. My name's Ailabelle and that was my longest intro ever. And what an interesting way to be spending my birthday talking about Miraculous Ladybug. Happy October 19th, everyone. And if you're watching this not on the 19th, then congratulations, you have entered a wormhole on my channel in which it's always October 19th. So on this video, it will forever be my birthday. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video, then save time by hitting the like button and subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites. And if you're still watching, put an hourglass emoji in the comments. Thank you. So yeah, Miraculous Ladybug season five. It's a thing that exists right now, currently. And how about those massive spoilery trailers, huh? Very, very interesting. But we're not here to talk about what's to come, we're gonna talk about what is. And the season five premiere definitely is. Take a walk with me. As you can see, I wrote a whole bunch of notes with my thoughts on the season five premiere. But because I had limited information at the time, I couldn't complete the script and so I decided to put my notes away until the time came where I had all of the relevant knowledge to eloquently talk about this. Well, that time has come, and wouldn't you know it, I no longer want to extensively rant about the time travel anymore due to it being somewhat pointless. I made my points already, so why beat the dead horse anymore? No, instead I'll just go through the premiere and just give you my general thoughts on the happenings within it. Let's just have an easy time this week, yeah? 
And just in case anyone has been curious as to why I don't put clips of the shows and movies I review into my reviews, it's partially because I'm avoiding copyright and other such problems. That's why I just use limited stills. So, without further ado, we start the episode with all of Paris chanting Ladybug's name. You know, the cool thing about this is that Cat Noir developed a completely new power. Good for him! What's the power, you ask? Well, it's the power of invisibility. But Aloe, Cat Noir can't turn invisible. No, no, he definitely can, because why else would the citizens only be cheering for Ladybug? Surely, they know how important Cat is, and that the two are equal partners in saving Paris. So... why...? Oh, that's right. Girl power and all that. Ugh. It's also a tad unrealistic that each and every citizen is cheering for Ladybug at this point. In fact, it's kind of a shame we don't explore the idea that some citizens hate Ladybug and Cat Noir, due to the villains only attacking to get their miraculous. This collective hive mind of the civilians is kind of annoying. You'd think there would be active people out there trying to take their miraculous just so that Hawk Moth would leave everyone alone. Realistically, someone would be booing Ladybug at this moment because now the man formerly known as Hawk Moth will relentlessly attack Paris until he gets what he wants. You know, now that I say that out loud, Gabriel sounds like a toddler having a tantrum. Kind of pathetic, really. And let's talk about Gabriel for a second. I've talked about this before, but why is he even making a threat at this point? He has every tool in his arsenal that he needs to win. If this show followed logic and made the villain less of a dum-dum, Gabriel would absolutely win. But now that I know we're operating under a warped closed loop theory, and the fact that logic is completely off the table, and the writing will allow the good guys to win regardless of if it makes sense or not, Gabriel was doomed to fail from the start. Miraculous is truly a it's not the destination that matters but the journey type of show because we already know how things will turn out. Takes away a bit of tension, but whatever. Unfortunately, this means we will have to sit and watch Gabriel's inadequacy, constantly wondering how anyone could possibly be that dumb. But Aloe, by that logic, every show and movie that utilizes the closed loop theory is bad because you already know how the future will turn out, and thus, there aren't any stakes. And without stakes, it's hard to get invested. Well, no, that's not entirely true. Just because you know how things will turn out doesn't mean that that stops a story from being entertaining. You can know what to expect and still have a good time. Otherwise, people wouldn't rewatch their favorite movies or even tolerate shows with this time travel or storytelling element. If something is of good quality, you just want to experience it or experience it again because it left you with good feelings. And for writers who suspect that the closed loop might do exactly what I said before and take away any tension, then they have the option of not showing us the endgame in the future. They could just give a small sample of the closed loop in the more immediate future, rather than tell us what will happen at the end of the story. There are good ways of doing this. The closed loop isn't the problem. The problem is, one, the lack of consistency of most of the rules in which the world of Miraculous works, and two, reality warping around the characters just so that they win regardless of whether or not it makes sense. But Aloe, Miraculous Ladybug is a kid show. It doesn't always have to make sense or be that serious in its rule keeping. The kid show argument is not a good one. Yes, there are shows for kids that have loose continuity, if any, and little to no logic in anything. But there are a bunch of kid shows that do have rules and continuity regardless of whether or not it's episodic or serialized. Miraculous Ladybug is a show that has established rules. They make the rules very clear. Well, they try to. And whether or not they stick to them is a different thing altogether. But Miraculous is very much a show that has an overarching plot and is a show that says, this is how things work. These rules are the glue that tie many elements of the show together, including the stakes and drama. When such rules are contradicted, of course people would be frustrated. It ruins the suspension of disbelief and totally takes you out of the moment. Adding on to that, don't kids deserve shows that are of high quality where the writers and animators do their best to bring a fun and enriching experience? Kids shows don't have to be bad or dumb and it's honestly insulting to kids to think that they should only watch or that they only watch colorful, meaningless garbage. 
If us adults demand quality for our shows, shouldn't we demand quality for the kids? Or are they not worthy of it because they all can't immediately tell the quality of something quite yet? Miraculous is intended to be a show for kids and early teens. Even so, it has attracted an audience of virtually all ages. It's a show that is trying to tell a cohesive narrative with rules and stakes. I criticize it because I see its potential and I'm disappointed with the end product. And for everyone who makes the argument, if you don't like it, then don't watch it, I say, well, I don't watch it. And I also say that myself and others are allowed to voice our opinions. Just because it's an opinion you don't like doesn't mean we can't express ourselves. Besides, criticism is good. It helps creators and everyone, really, to grow and learn. I'm not raging and just ranting aimlessly. I'm calmly telling you my thoughts and issues in hopes that stories told in the future don't run into such pitfalls. Also, it's fun to talk about. But anyway, back to the episode. I have a legitimate question. How does the general public know about the Miraculous? Is it because of Chloe revealing herself and transforming in front of everyone? Are the Miraculous public knowledge? Do people know about Kwamis? When Monarch was like, you must bring me Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous, I kind of expected some people to say, what's a Miraculous? And even if they did know what a Miraculous was, how would they know specifically which article of clothing on the heroes was the Miraculous? Anyway, after this, Gabriel low-key threatens the Kwamis. Is there a good reason for them to be scared of him? They're tremendously more powerful than him and can cause more mayhem. But I suppose it's more because they're innocent little cinnamon rolls who just want peace and aren't used to that kind of hostility. In which case, fine, that's fair. Also, Gabriel's lack of awareness in how awful he is is just astounding. Throwing around the word slave so casually, he's really embodying that Lucius Malfoy energy, huh? And let's talk about Monarch's design here for a second. Yes, it's a travesty, but at the same time, I've gotten used to it at this point, so it's not the worst thing ever. Don't get me wrong, it's still bad, but not the same kind of bad as, say, Pegabug. It's still bad though. However, that's not what I want to talk about. In this moment, Monarch only transformed with Fluff and Nuru. So if that's the case, why are other Miraculous on him activated and why is his outfit so multicolored? This should technically be a different design from Monarch since Monarch is the combination of all the Miraculous. And yet, here, he only unified two of them. So how does this make sense? Animation error, maybe? Or just cutting corners? I don't know. Next, let me bring attention to this still right here. Read the captions. It basically says that changing the past will have serious consequences on the present. <laughs> oh, no it won't. I also feel like I don't need to talk about the rest of the episode too much because it's all mostly Monarch stop being a dummy and win this already. Or it's one big whole episode of what not to do as a villain. A cautionary tale for the next Hawk Moth. Monarch, stop talking so much and go do what you need to do. He's basically saying, Oh man, I sure hope Ladybug doesn't come stop me now. I'm about to do an evil thing. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. And then she does. Quick side note, Rabbit Noir is one of the best designs in the show. I love it so much. The ears are cool and adorable, the tail is unique, and the glowing blue accents are everything. It would have been even more awesome if his eyes turned blue, but whatever. Also, I found an animation error. His mask isn't colored correctly here or here, but then it gets fixed here. I also like how Ladybug says, Hey cat, how the heck do you know how to use the time powers so well? You've never done it before. And Rabbit Noir gives a hand wave of an answer that basically amounts to, because the writers say I can. After this, we get some more shenanigans. Nino and Alia's first kiss happens in the background because it's that unimportant. And of course, we get to the infamous scene of Monarch being unconscious in front of our heroes. They have the chance to retrieve every Miraculous that was stolen. This was basically the only fathomable and logical way for our heroes to win, and they flub it up so hard. 
These heroes who have such short attention spans couldn't focus for 25 seconds, and I did count that it, it is roughly 25 seconds, and prioritize what needed to be done. Ladybug knows the weight of the situation, and it took her 15 seconds just to take the bunny miraculous away because of her hesitation. I understand being cautious, but my goodness. So now I swing back around to Monarch should definitely be able to win this. The next part is Gabriel being a jerk, but what's new? Ladybug and Rabbit Noir meet past Master Fu. I already talked about the problems with this. Oh look, it's Emily from the past. That's neat. Moving on. And now we've arrived at Alex time. Boy, I'm glad the writers remembered that young Alex existed, because I know I definitely forgot. <laughs> Putting her on the team happened a bit late into the game, but I'll take this over them forgetting about this plot point entirely. I love how Alex is all like, finally, it's my time to shine and be a hero. And then Ladybug is like, here's the dog miraculous. Alex looks at Ladybug like she's insane and is like, where the heck is my rabbit miraculous? And Ladybug says, girl, chill. Don't you watch the news? The what? Never mind. We need to build anticipation for the audience. Ah, gotcha. And then we get a legitimately heartwarming scene between Alex and her dad. Alex has to be separated from her friends and family for who knows how long, and she readily accepts this. I personally feel like she should have hesitated and questioned this a bit more. After all, it is a lot to ask of a person to give up a part of their life for an indeterminate amount of time. But I guess that's more up to a person's personality and how they deal with situations. You know what though? I kind of want to follow Alex on her journey now. I feel like that would be an interesting side plot. Never mind the insanity of Alex interfering with the past and sending pictures of the past to her dad in the future, which is a time travel no-no under the Back to the Future rules, but fine, I guess, with the closed loop theory. Hmm. Actually, hold on a second. Are the characters aware of how time works in their world? We keep hearing how bad it is for the villain to have the time miraculous because he could mess up the present, or the future, and that was definitely true back in Cat Blanc. But now we're seeing looping timelines. Heck, even the characters have seen it. So there has to be some level of awareness of it being looped. So by that logic, since future Bunnix exists and the future can't actually be changed, there's technically no serious consequence for Monarch having the time miraculous. Then again, I am also aware that at any point the writers can switch up the time rules again and make it go back to the Back to the Future rules to add artificial stakes. Ugh. It's so amazingly frustrating, I just can't. Anyway, Kenny girl looks cute. I approve. Cut back to Gabriel being an idiot for not ending this quickly by warning past Emily. The more I think about it, the more I see similarities between the Ladybug and Cat Noir duo and Gabriel. They all hesitate too much and focus on the wrong things. It's frustrating when they have this same flaw, because nothing gets accomplished in an appropriate amount of time and it just makes everyone look so dumb. Gabriel, dude, your wife is right there. She's alive and awake. You can solve your biggest problem right now. Literally, no one is expecting you to go to where she is. You can win, end this torment, please. But no, he doesn't because we need more episodes of this show. <sighs> so now the heroes have the bunny miraculous back. Yay. Alex is the first non-main character to do a unification and it looks good as well. This episode is basically compensating for the lack of attention towards Alex by giving her all of the perks and attention. I feel like she should have been in more of this episode. In fact, let's address this now. The pacing of this episode is weird. And in case it hasn't been apparent until now, I actually watched this episode. <gasps> Calm down, I didn't watch it the way it's meant to be watched. I had it on mute while I read the subtitles, and I mostly skimmed through the episode, rewinding and fast forwarding a whole lot. Though I did watch a good chunk of it, I probably watched like 95% of it, this is probably the most of any episode I've ever actually seen. <laughs> Gotta say, it's a weird thing for me. 
Anyway, the pacing is weird. Most of the episode is a cat and mouse game between the heroes and the villain. All the while, Cat immediately knows and understands how to use the Bunny Miraculous. And then we shoehorn young Alex in at the last minute, which makes it so that we have to rush through her goodbye scene with her dad and inflate her importance as a hero. I feel like she should have played a part sooner, but whatever. One compliment I can give is that you can definitely tell the animation has improved since when Bunnix was first introduced. Young Alex's transformation sequence looks a lot smoother compared to when we first saw adult Alex transform. It's the exact same transformation, but remastered. Also, the symbol behind young Bunnix is different than the symbol behind adult Bunnix. No idea why. Also, also, look at young Bunnix's outfit. It's different than adult Bunnix's outfit. That's to be expected. But funny enough, young Bunnix's outfit has elements similar to my Bunny Miraculous OC's outfit. And I revealed this design before Young Bunnix was revealed to the world. I predicted this outfit before it even became a thing, so that's fun. And in the end, Gabriel is sulking to his coma dead wife, and the Kwamis all see this. Now, I see this as a bit of a missed opportunity, or maybe it will be explored later, I don't know. We could have the Kwamis start to sympathize with Gabriel now that they know what he's trying to do. I'm not saying they should help him, but now that they understand the villain's plan, when they inevitably get saved by Ladybug, they might not be able to tell her his identity, but they can tell her what he wants to do and give her some clues. From there, we can start to have Ladybug piece together who Monarch really is, and maybe even try to come up with a way to help him without using the Ladybug and Cat Miraculous. Just a thought. And yay, Natalie stood up for herself and called Gabriel out on his shenanigans. Good for her. How long will she keep this resolve? Only time will tell. But in the meantime, we did it. We got through this season five premiere. Go us. Okay, so it's no secret to anyone who has watched my channel for a while now that I'm not exactly the biggest fan of how Miraculous Ladybug handles time travel. Now, I hear the collective groan of the audience, but don't worry, I won't fully go into it since I've literally and thoroughly discussed it this many times. This is not a video of me critiquing the show's time travel mechanics again, trust me. But something that came along in this journey down the time travel rabbit hole was the conception of an original Miraculous character. A previous Rabbit Miraculous user, Mona de la Fontaine, hero name, Mon Lapine. And for everyone out there who thinks that I was inspired by the Genshin Impact character of the same name who bears a slight resemblance to my character, and I know enough of you think that because you brought it to my attention, you would be incorrect because I've never played Genshin nor have I seen the characters. I came up with Mona's name after looking up baby names for girls, and I picked Mona partially because it's the name of my favorite Pretty Little Liars character from the show, and I chose her last names because I like their meaning and how they sounded. She has darker skin because of her Egyptian ethnicity, and blue eyes because Rabbit Miraculous. Okay? Okay. I created Mona as a connecting piece that would make the events of Time Tagger make sense. Check out that video, by the way. And I ended up giving her a pretty tragic end. Many of you latched onto her and wanted her to come back to some capacity, but I didn't know how that would be possible at first. But after some months, I think I came up with a solution. And for all of you who are satisfied with her ending and don't think that this is necessary, eh, I still kind of hope you'll stick around anyway because I worked hard on this. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell and we're about to save Mona. And just for some context, this story takes place sometime during Season 4, after Mr. Pigeon 72, but before the finale. Also, I am operating under the Back to the Future time travel theory and not the closed loop theory that has been wonkily established in the recent canon. This is my AU, so that's what I say. In saying that, it's also worth mentioning that this story is not part of Bonds Beyond Fate. It's a totally separate entity. Enjoy our miraculous rescue of Mona the Mon Lapine. Marinette and the rest of her peers sat in class listening to a history lesson being lectured. At first, it was just like any other lesson where they learned about a pivotal ancient society that helped shape the culture of the world today. But on this particular day, something was a bit different more emotionally charged. Today, they were learning about ancient Egypt. Something stung at Marinette. 
Not physically, but something deep in her heart. She couldn't sit still. She didn't know it, but Adrian was feeling something similar and he had no way to express himself at this moment. Both Marinette and Adrian would have otherwise felt alone, being unaware of each other's secret identities, if it weren't for their friend Alex being present. They wanted to look at the girl to search for a sense of camaraderie, but couldn't as it wouldn't make sense why they, Marinette and Adrian, would have this awful feeling as well. It was a feeling of sadness, guilt, regret, and great loss. Some time ago, Ladybug and Cat Noir were faced against an akumatized victim from the future, Time Tagger. During this conflict, they came to know of someone who used to exist, a woman named Mona who wielded the Bunny Miraculous. More than that, someone who was their friend in a long-deleted timeline. With much bravery, Mona took on the task of protector of time knowing that there could be consequences, and in the fight against Time Tagger, ended up getting stuck in the past when her miraculous was broken by the future Cat Noir. In her last-ditch effort to help the new future heroes from her place in the past, Mona wrote an encouraging note that gave Ladybug the motivation and confidence needed to save the day, while also giving her the idea to bestow the bunny miraculous to her friend Alex, Mona's very distant relative. Even when faced with being erased from existence, Mona was a hero until the very end, ensuring that the future was bright. Hearing about ancient Egypt only brought back those nasty feelings of not being able to do more for this woman. Marinette may not have known her personally, but she could tell that she was very kind and brave and didn't deserve her fate. Alex herself owed her life to Mona, as Mona essentially gave up her existence, paving the way for Alex to exist. Mari couldn't fully fathom what that might have been like. The idea that you existing meaning that someone else could not. Someone who was irreplaceable to society. Not that she regretted having Alex around, of course not. Alex was one of her best friends, and she's super grateful to have had the chance to know her. But surely, the girl was having some version of survivor's guilt. Mari clenched her fists. Something had to be done. Could something be done? She'd soon find out. While walking home from school, Alia placed a sympathetic hand on Marinette's shoulder. Hey girl, you've been pretty low energy since the last class. Penny for your thoughts? Oh, well, I guess I haven't told you, have I? Haven't told me what? You mean, there's an even bigger secret than you being Ladybug? I mean, I don't think it's that monumental. I mean, I guess it might be? You see... Marinette then goes on to explain Mona's story. Oh man, now I see why you're so down. That's both complicated and sad. Poor Mona. Yeah, Mari added, downtrodden. But there's nothing you can really do about it, right? Mona's future is gone, so you can't take back what Time Tagger did. And even if you could, Alex wouldn't exist. I think we just have to face the reality we have. Which sucks, but it is what it is, Alia told her. That's just... It doesn't feel right to me, Alia. As a hero, I've been able to help so many people and do so much good. My miraculous ladybug has fixed so many issues that were caused by Akamas. I feel like I should be able to fix this, but I don't know how. The hopelessness she was feeling rang a similar tune as to how she felt with Cat Blanc's future. As Guardian, she felt responsible for everyone, and if something was within her power to make right, it seemed like the right thing to do. Time is a tricky thing to mess with, Marinette. I've seen a lot of shows that use time travel, and after hearing about your experiences, I know that messing with it is no joke. It's best to leave well enough alone. After all, Mona gave us this chance. We don't want to undo her good work. I know you're right, but... I don't know. When the two of them made it to the bakery and up into Marinette's room, the Kwamis all greeted them. Once all the pleasantries were out of the way, Marinette called for one in particular. Hey, Fluff? Can I ask you something? The small bunny Kwame floated up to the girl. Now or later? I assume you mean now, but what is now but the past's later? You've known a lot of bunny miraculous users, right? That I have. Do you remember all of them? I'm fairly certain I do. I'd like to think my memory transcends all space and time. Needless to say, I'm good at remembering stuff, probably. Kind of comes with the territory of having the power of time at your fingertips. Or bunny tips. Or is it pause? Though one could also argue I'd be bad at remembering stuff since there's just so much stuff. Alright, so... 
have there been a lot of bunny miraculous users who stopped existing because of someone messing with time? Fluff lost a bit of her pep. Lost a time. Lost a time. Can they be lost if they technically never were? Most of the wielders of my Miraculous are pretty careful, so it didn't happen often. But yes, it has happened a few times. But if their timelines got erased, how do you remember them? Alia asked. Like I alluded to before, I am the literal embodiment of evolution. There is nothing throughout time without my knowing. I am time, and time is me. How pathetic would I be if something time-related went under my radar or over my head? I can't forget such important things, even if I wanted to. Fluff, I know you remember hearing about Mona de la Fontaine back during the Time Tagger incident, but you don't just remember hearing about her, you remember her, don't you? The bunny creature became quieter and looked away sadly. She nodded. I do. She was a very sweet girl. Do you remember the names and faces of the others who were lost? Mari asked. Yes. Although, how curious us Kwame say bubbles instead of words. I know the names in my head, but can't reveal them to those who never knew. So, if we were to do a rescue mission, Mona would be the only one who could be saved, Marinette added. Wait, a rescue mission? You don't mean going back and saving her, do you? Marinette sheepishly scratched her cheek and looked away. Maybe... No, 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 no. That's a no-go, Marinette. I can't get behind you making a change like that. Wait, so you're saying that it's actually possible to save her? Alia asked the creature. To save the unsavable, to save what doesn't exist anymore, is like dividing by zero. Except, it's not. So, sort of, but it would mess things up. Mostly the current present. I won't explain how to do it, Fluff stubbornly said while crossing her arms. You could risk Alex's life, and I like my current user. I don't want to trade in one for the other. They're both precious to me, so this is already hard enough. Upon hearing that, Marinette was once again filled with guilt. The rest of the Kwamis watched on at the conversation intently, feeling sympathetic towards their friends. She didn't want to pressure Fluff, who had already gone through so much, even long before she, Marinette, was even born. And she didn't want to entertain the idea of losing Alex. Maybe this was a lost cause after all. After a few moments of thought, Alia spoke up with zeal in her eyes. What if we could have both of them? What if both Mona and Alex could exist? Fluff shook her head. It's not possible, I'm afraid. Alia gave a confident grin. Maybe not just with the bunny miraculous, but with some help from a couple of other friends. Huh? What do you mean, Alia? Okay, so check this out. Mona's future doesn't exist anymore, so we couldn't save her situation from Time Tagger even if we wanted to. However, there is one point in time where she does exist, back in ancient Egypt. For a few weeks, she was still around before she disappeared. That's how she was able to write those notes and hand off her broken miraculous to Alex's ancestor. So, if we go back and rescue her before she disappears, then we have a chance. Please understand that if you stop Mona from completing her mission, then it'll change the current future. Mona needs to write that note and give her miraculous away. It's super important, Fluff explained. Yeah, I get that, Alia said. That's why we're gonna save her after she does those things. But there's so little time to even do that, Marinette told her. How would we be able to do anything? I need you to think, Marinette. Alia placed her hands on her friend's shoulders and looked her dead in the eyes. You know these miraculous and their powers. You're the creative one. Think of a way that we can stop Mona from disappearing. Just remember, you can't use the bunny miraculous to do it. I... Uh... Marinette stuttered through her words. Alia squeezed her shoulders. Think. You can do it. I believe in you, Ladybug. Marinette closed her eyes and allowed herself to sink into her thoughts. The problem is Mona disappearing because her past was changed. We can't make it the same as her original past. We need something different. An outside-of-the-box idea. A power... to make her stop disappearing. A power to defy the laws of time. 
Marinette opened her eyes and looked over at the huddled Kwamis. Using her ladybug vision, Oriko, the rooster Kwami, and Tiki both stood out from the crowd. Mari gasped. I think I got it. Alia smiled as she released her friend. You think so? Before Fluff had a chance to say anything, Marinette assured her. If we fail, then things will stay the same as they are now. But if we succeed, we'll have saved an innocent woman's life. I promise, Fluff, that we'll be super careful. Fluff still looked apprehensive. Trust me, Fluff. Or, at least, trust in the Mona who trusted in me. After a few moments of thinking about it, Fluff said, I'm still not a fan of this plan, but do what you think is best, Guardian. Guardian Marinette, you are the Guardian. If both Master Fu and Mona believed in you, then I will too. Marinette and Alia nodded to her. And thanks, Alia, for the pep talk. I wouldn't have gotten the idea if you didn't get the ball rolling, Marinette said. No worries. Glad I could help. Later on, Alex was in her room with some earphones covering her ears. And yet, she wasn't listening to any music. She just stared at the ceiling, thinking about past events. She sighed. And then suddenly, there was a knock on her window. Startled, she sat up and looked over. Right outside was Cat Noir waving at her. She immediately jumped up from her seat to let him in. Hey, what are you doing here, Cat Noir? Alex asked. Is there an Akuma in my house? Cat shook his head. Nope, nothing like that. Actually, we've got a proposition for you. It's a super important mission of the highest rank. A mission? Sweet. So I get to be Bunnix again? And wait, did you say we? She looked around. Where is Ladybug anyway? I'm right here, said a familiar voice from outside the room. Just then, Ladybug swung into the room, except it didn't fully look like Ladybug. There were her signature spots and splashes of red, but she also had some gold accents and feathers and a gold, sharp, claw-like ring on one of her thumbs. Sorry I'm late. Had to settle a few more things, she said. Alex and Kat continued to stare at her. Kat spoke up first. Looking good, my lady. Is that a new unification I see? Ladybug nodded. Yep. I unified the ladybug with the rooster miraculous. It's the key to our success. Wait. Unification? Ladybug, or whatever your new name is, what's all this about? Alex asked. Ladybug, or roosterbug, if you want to call her that. I, the narrator, won't. Gave a smile of assurance to the smaller girl. We're going to save Mona, Alex gasped. Wait, seriously? Hold on, you were thinking about her too? That's a weird coincidence. Hey, hey, how about we focus less on the coincidence and more on the mission, Kat quickly suggested. Doesn't that sound great, though? We can save Mona. Yeah, that sounds awesome, but how would that even work? She and I can't... Yes, you can. It's possible, Ladybug told her. And it's actually not that hard to do. I mean, it'll require some quick moves, but I know we can pull it off. Even after hearing that, Alex frowned and averted direct eye contact with Ladybug. The thought of messing literally anything up that far back in the past sort of freaked her out. Cat Noir patted her shoulder. Ladybug has the plan down to a T. You'll be safe. Still worried, Alex looked up at Ladybug. What are you gonna do? I'm going to give her the power to defy her fate. Is... is that something you can do? With this unification, I can. You see, the Rooster Miraculous allows its user to possess any superpower. If I combine this power with the Ladybugs, which can create anything, I can make an item to put on Mona that will stop her from disappearing. I'll give myself the power to make an item that, if worn, its user won't be affected by the established laws of time travel. It's like a power of temporal rejection, I guess? The explanation is kind of weird, but you get what I mean, yeah? I think so, Alex responded. I mean, it sounds like you really thought this through. That's our ladybug for you, Kat exclaimed. Um, not to be rude or anything, but how come Cat Noir is here? Alex asked. Cat seemed visibly hurt by that question. She quickly cleaned up the sentiment. 
don't take that the wrong way. It's not like I don't enjoy having you around. You're super important, Cat Noir, and as always, I'm a big fan. But I just wanted to know what you were going to do in this plan, she sighed. Sorry, I know that came off as pretty uncool of me. I'm just a little anxious about this is all. I want to make sure everything is perfect or else bad things can happen. You're going to be fine, Alex, I promise, Ladybug told her. Your family will be fine, and so will your home, your friends, and everything you've come to know. We don't trade lives around here. We save them. That's what heroes do. Ladybug then gestured to Cat Noir. Cat's here because he wants to meet and support Mona. Remember, in an alternate future, she was our friend as well. Regardless of how much he'll do, Cat deserved to know what I was planning, and he wanted to be there. Just think of me as your emotional support cat who promises to not touch or look at anything important in the burrow, Cat added gleefully. But then, his tone became a bit more melancholic and his energy diminished. And, to be honest, I know it wasn't the me who I am now that did it, but it was my fault that Mona got stuck in the past in the first place. Because of me, she's not around anymore. Ladybug looked at him sympathetically. Cat... I know it's kind of dumb to feel guilty over something that I didn't do, but then I did do it. It's confusing. I might not be that helpful on this mission, but I at least want to apologize for what her version of me did. Ladybug placed a gentle hand on his shoulder. Have you always felt this bad about what happened? He nodded. Yeah, but I tried to ignore it. After all, again, it wasn't the me now, but knowing that I'm even capable of ruining lives like that. Cat Noir, you are a good guy, and I know the future you is a good guy as well. It was a mistake, Ladybug told him. We all know that there are risks to being superheroes. Mona knew that as well. What the future you did wasn't on purpose. It was the fault of the future Hawk Moth that we were even in that fight to begin with. Still... That doesn't change how I feel, Cat said. He then perked up a bit. So, when this plan works, I'm going to give Mona the biggest apology ever. I was thinking of bringing her a bouquet of flowers. Would that have been too much? Ladybug grinned at him. I don't think so. I think it would have been sweet. Great, Cat exclaimed before jumping out of the window. Alex and Ladybug just stared at said window, completely speechless about the randomness that just unfolded. A few moments later, Cat leapt back into the room holding a beautiful bouquet of flowers. He had on a huge grin. Where were you hiding that? Alex asked. On the roof. I wasn't sure how it would look to bring flowers on a mission, so I hid them there to see if it would be alright or not. I'm surprised you didn't just bring them in with you the first time around, Ladybug added. Hey, this is serious business, Cat told her. Mona has already been through a lot, and I didn't want to add anything unnecessary to today's mission. But, since you think it's in good taste, milady, I don't feel weird about it. Ladybug sighed, but still grinned at him. I'm sure she'll appreciate it, Kitty. Now then. She turned to her pink-haired classmate. So what do you say, Alex? Ladybug presented the pocket watch buddy miraculous to the girl. Are you ready to become Bunnix again? Thinking it over some more, Alex gave a confident nod and took the Miraculous into her hand. Fluff then emerged from it. Hey Fluff, it's been a while. Good to see you, Alex. Ready to go, go, go? No time like the present. Alex nodded. Fluff, clockwise. She was then consumed with a bright blue light as Fluff fused with the watch, turning her into her superhero form, Bunnix. Do you understand what to do? Ladybug asked. You can count on me. Alex opened up the burrow and the other two heroes followed her inside. Looking at the different locations and times, Alex searched around for something very specific. It took a few minutes, but she finally found it. There! I found her! The trio looked through the portal and saw a weakened Monlapine presenting her broken miraculous and letters to a stranger in ancient Egypt. Her body was near translucent. We only have one shot at this. Bunnix. When I say so, Open the burrow under Monlapine and make sure she appears right in front of me. Do you understand? Roger. 
They waited for their moment, and in the meantime, Ladybug activated her rooster-boosted Lucky Charm and created a small square piece of paper with black spots on the back of it. The other side had a cute drawing of an actual Ladybug. After several more seconds, from what could be seen from the portal, the hesitant stranger finally took the items from a desperate Monlapine. And just before her body disappeared entirely, Ladybug shouted, NOW! Bunnix opened a burrow entrance under the fading hero and she instantly dropped into the burrow with her rescuers. The moment she hit the ground, Ladybug instantly slapped the piece of paper onto the back of the woman's neck, pressing firmly. Mon Lapine took a deep exhale while remaining in shock. As Ladybug held the paper against the woman's neck, her body slowly started to regain its opacity and solidity. When she was fully restored, Ladybug retracted her hand, as well as the paper, revealing a small Ladybug tattoo on the back of Mon Lapine's neck. The cute Ladybug drawing had been attached to her neck and was no longer on the paper that Ladybug made. Blinking in disbelief, Mon Lapine continued to try and process what was happening. Meanwhile, the stranger in Egypt just witnessed someone suddenly disappearing in front of them and, in response, ran away in a bit of a panic while still holding on to what the bunny hero gave him. What? What? Mon Lapine finally spoke. She looked down at her hands. How... how am I still here? Finally realizing she wasn't alone, Mon Lapine's eyes widened with shock at who she was seeing. Cat Noir? Is that you? You're... so young. Cat grinned as he held onto the flowers. Yeah, well, I've been taking care of myself a lot more nowadays. Hitting the gym, eating my veggies. That works. Still stunned by everything, Mon Lapine looked around her. I am in the burrow? But how? At last, she noticed Ladybug and Bunnix. You remind me of a friend of mine. If Cat Noir's here, you must be a young Ladybug. Am I right? Ladybug, with the widest sincere grin and with happy tears welling up in her eyes, replied, That's right. Sorry it looks so different than normal. The unification with the Rooster Miraculous is throwing my typical look off a bit. Unification, huh? And you, she turned to Bunnix. You're the Bunny Miraculous wielder. And you aren't me. I'm sure not. I'm me, Bunnix. It's nice to finally meet you, cousin. Mon Lapine looked confused. Cousin? Wait, hold on. How am I here? How are you here? She pointed to Bunnix. Now that the shock was wearing off, Mon Lapine was getting more rattled. If Ladybug and Cat Noir are here, and you're with them, that means that I don't exist. I was supposed to disappear. What happened? She started to hyperventilate. What's going to happen in the future? What did we do? Ladybug held Mon Lapine's hands in hers. Mona, please calm down. With her body shaking and expression full of stress, Mon Lapine looked over at the young hero. You... you know my name? Ladybug nodded reassuringly. We got your letter. Thanks to you, we were able to defeat Time Tagger. And thanks to you, I have my awesome friend Alex who was the Bunny Miraculous wielder. You guys are... Basically cousins, Bunnix added. Distant cousins, though. That guy who ran off is our shared ancestor. Kind of crazy, right? Welcome to the Coopdell family. But I don't get it. How am I here? Isn't it obvious? We came to save you, Cat Noir told her. You came to save me? With a little bit of ingenuity and teamwork, we were able to use the Ladybug and Rooster Miraculous to give you the power to reject the laws of time. Thanks to that tattoo on your neck, you aren't going to disappear because of some pesky time rules, Ladybug told her. Mon Lapine took her hands from Ladybug's and reached back to touch the back of her neck. So that's what that was. Regaining her composure, she spoke to them sternly. I really appreciate that you guys did this. Seriously, thank you. But you have no idea the forces you're messing with here. The fact of the matter was that I was supposed to disappear. Who knows what me existing outside in a space I was never meant to occupy could do. How it could affect your futures. So, are you saying that you don't want to live? Bunnix asked her. What? It's not about that, Mon Lapine responded. Sure it is. It's a simple yes or no question. Do you want to live? Clenching her fists, Mon Lapine looked down at the ground. It's not as simple as you think it is. Ladybug spoke to her tenderly. 
Mona, you've given every ounce of yourself into being a hero. You fought the good fight, even when things were at their scariest, all so that we could have a bright future. Up until your final moments, you still had hope that things would be alright, even if you weren't part of the equation. Do you still have that hope, now that you can be? Mona didn't respond. I think you still have a lot of good you can do if you're as awesome as that, Kat added. Although, I think it'd be perfectly fine if you took some time to rest as well. I'd say you earned a vacation. But, the butterfly effect, your futures, are going to be fine, Kat told her. Just like with everything, we take things day by day. We'll handle it. Besides, it's not like our future will be that dramatically changed. You say that, but that's not necessarily true, said a fourth voice. The group looked over to see another burrow portal opening. From it emerged adult Bunnix. Oh crud, it's adult me. We totally messed up, didn't we? We broke some major time roll or something? Young Bunnix asked. Adult Bunnix grinned. Sorta, but I'm gonna let it slide. She walked up to Mon Lapine while still addressing the others. A plus on the teamwork and creativity, you guys. Seeing Mona here is just as exciting now as it was back then. She then spoke to the alternate bunny wielder. I'm sure you had a pretty big day, haven't you? Mon Lapine looked at young Bunnix and then at her adult counterpart. I see. If anything, you shouldn't be so relaxed about this. If anything, you should be more relaxed, adult Bunnix told her. I still exist and our future, or rather, my present, is pretty alright in my opinion. The heroes are still doing their hero thing and Paris is still fully functioning. Mon Lapine didn't respond. Do you know why I'm here, Mona? Adult Bunnix asked. I'm here to take you home. Mon Lapine's eyes widened in disbelief. Home? Well, yeah. You didn't think that you'd be going to live in Mini-Me's timeline, did you? What, were you, a fully grown adult, going to hang out with a bunch of teenagers? We don't want any weird assumptions being made about you now, do we? Regardless of where I go, I don't really have a home. My family no longer exists, I don't have a job anymore, and my friends don't even know who I am. I have no identity in your reality. I'll be honest. Yes, yes, of course I want to live. The idea of disappearing terrified me. I missed my life and everyone in it, every moment that I was stuck in the past. But I didn't want to let anyone down, and I still don't. I'm still Mon Lapine, a hero of Paris, even if... Even if my Paris doesn't exist anymore, it's still who I am. I've been told for years to follow the rules, especially with the bunny Miraculous's power, or else there could be dire consequences. I might be alive now, but what will that do to all of you? I honestly adore that you're all here, and I love that you have a future, but I don't know if it can accommodate me. Mon Lapine then addressed adult Bunnix specifically. Bunnix. You don't have to give me specific information, but will me going to your present create drastic changes in your future? After thinking for a moment, she nodded. Yes, of course it will. You being around will make our current future no longer exist. See? Mon Lapine said. But I didn't say that that was a bad thing, Bunnix added. She then became a bit more serious. The fact is, I'm cheating a bit here, but it's all for a bright future. Something big just happened in the time I'm from, and things seem promising, but a bit uncertain. There's something missing. Something that, if it doesn't exist, we may face some problems. That's why we had to think out of the box to find a solution for it. And who do you think came up with the wildcard solution? Bunnix gestured over to Ladybug. Me? Lightly pushing Mon Lapine off to the side, Bunnix told the teen heroes, Would you give us a minute? I need to chat with our friend here. This conversation is for adult time travelers only. Young Bunnix and Cat Noir collectively groaned. Aww. In a hushed tone, adult Bunnix tells her, The fact of the matter, Mona, is that from this moment onward, you have remained in the hearts and minds of these young heroes. You had already left an impression on them before, but now, you're real, you're alive, and your bravery inspires them. Mon Lapine looks at the teen heroes and they're all giving her approving smiles despite not knowing what they're talking about. Adult Bunnix continued, You gave them hope and a chance and your situation helped them to realize that they have more power over their lives and on their environment more than they think they did. 
They'll take those feelings with them for years and years. And one day, when Minibug is not so mini anymore, she'll need something super special. And she'll think of you. Upon hearing that, Mon Lapine's eyes began to water as she felt warm inside. They... they still care about me? In your timeline? My... friends? She recalled the fun times she had growing up with them. The schoolwork, the field trips, the dances, the games, the adventures, the moments where they shared each other's happiness, the moments where they comforted each other during times of grief, the battles won and the battles lost. All of it was precious to her and made her heart long for some semblance of what she lost. Yes, they still care. Maybe not in the same way as the ones you personally knew, but how crazy is it that you were able to positively impact the lives of the same people in different timelines? Even when they don't know you, you're still making a good impression and leaving your mark. This might seem kind of sappy and not at all founded on reality of how time and time travel works, but I feel that some bonds transcend such roles, don't you think? I, um... Mon Lapine's lip trembled as she held back tears. I don't... I don't know what to say. Say you're ready to start a new journey. Just know that you won't be taking the journey alone. We'll support you during every step. And don't worry about the whole not having an identity thing. We'll get it settled. We're the heroes of Paris. We have more influence than you think we do. Mon Lapine chuckled as she wiped away the tears that she could no longer control. That... that sounds like an abuse of power to me. Bunnix gave her a side smile. Maybe, but it's for the greater good. So I'll let it slide. Mon Lapine completed her sentence for her. Bunnix gave her a playful punch to the shoulder. That's more like it. Once they were done with their private conversation, Mon Lapine, after wiping away her tears, and adult Bunnix rejoined the teen heroes. So, what are you gonna do? Young Bunnix asked. I'm going with adult Bunnix to her time. I believe I am needed there. Finally feeling like progress has been made, the teens all gave her bright smiles as their faces lit up. You decided to keep on living? Ladybug asked. Yes. It'll take some time getting used to, given that so much will be different compared to where I came from, but I'll manage. I'll take things one step at a time. Fortunately, I won't have to take those steps on my own, Mon Lapine smiled. I have friends waiting for me. Her smile then became a bit sad. I'll miss my family, though, and my husband, but I'm happy to be alive. Hearing that, the kids became a bit sad as well, feeling bad about her situation. But this time, Mon Lapine went up to them and patted young Bunnix's head, ruffling her hair before holding one of Ladybug's hands and placing her other hand on Cat's shoulder. Thank you all so much for giving me this chance. I'm sorry for giving you a hard time. I was always grateful. I was just scared. But I'm not as afraid anymore. You guys gave me so much credit, but you guys are pretty awesome too. Having friends like you gives me the fuel I need to do what I need to do. Keep up that spirit, guys, and lift each other up. Things are going to get hard and frustrating, and you will face challenges that seem like they're too much for you to handle. But together, with everyone, you can handle it. Trust me. I trust you, Mon Lapine, Ladybug told her. Releasing Ladybug's hand and taking her hand off of Cat's shoulder, Mon Lapine asked, I have to know, though, was this entire plan only thought up by you three? Because something about its intricacies feels familiar. Was it... Rena Rouge? Ladybug gasped. <gasps> How did you know? Mon Lapine giggled. <laughs> She's a dear friend of mine. I understand her thought processes. So, Mon Lapine, Cat Noir slid closer to her with a hopeful grin. I know a lot has been going on, but I wanted to give these to you. He held out the bouquet of flowers. Mon Lapine blinked and surprised. These are... for me? He nodded. Mon Lapine slowly reached out and took the gift in her hands, looking down at them with gratitude. They're beautiful. I, uh, wanted to apologize, Kat said. For what? For putting you in this mess to begin with. Future me broke your miraculous and, well, you know what happened next. Understanding his guilt, Mon Lapine held the flowers with one arm and then hugged him with the other. I never blamed you for this, Cat Noir. I know your heart and that you're a good person. I'm not the only one who was risking my life during that fight. You were too. 
Things like this can happen, but it's not your fault. It's especially not your fault since it wasn't this you who did it. But, she grinned, it's totally like you to be guilty over what another version of you did. It's just a testament of how good of a guy you are. But if it makes you feel any better, then I accept your apology. She then broke the hug and continued to look at him with a sympathetic smile. I guess I'm also a bit worried that I might actually hurt someone in the future. Your version of me proved that it's possible, he said. Anything is possible, Kat, but don't let the what-ifs scare you. Just focus on doing your best. That's all anyone can expect from you. I know for a fact that you've done more helping than harming, so I think you'll be fine. Just remember that being Cat Noir is your choice. You can walk away at any time. But I know you won't because you're too responsible to leave Ladybug in Paris to be on their own. I understand that feeling. So be aware of who you are, a hero, and recognize that you can't always save everyone. Under that mask, you're just a human, and we make mistakes. But just like your willingness to believe in me, I wholeheartedly believe in your ability to get back up again after a fall and keep chugging along. Just don't forget that you have a bunch of people supporting you and backing you up as well. She gestured to the two Bunnixes and Ladybug. They'll be there to comfort you when life gets tough and to stop you from beating yourself up. His friends smiled at him as well. Kat smiled back before saying to Mon Lapine, Hey, how did this turn into me getting told a lesson? We were just the ones trying to encourage you. Mon Lapine chuckled. <laughs> There's plenty of growing to do for everyone. Kat scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Anyway, Mon Lapine, I didn't get a legitimate answer about this from adult Bunnix, so maybe you can help me out? Uh, I can try. Great, so tell me, what's the future look like for me and Ladybug? We're totally a couple, right? And it's okay if you tell me, because your timeline is different from Bunnix's, so come on. Tell me there's at least one reality where we end up together. Ladybug facepalmed in the background. Once again, Mon Lapine chuckled. <laughs> Sorry, Cat. I can't give away such spoilers. Our timeline seems similar enough that me giving any kind of info could drastically change things. You'll just have to see for yourself. Cat Noir's shoulders slumped. Darn. I was afraid of that. He then perked up. Oh well, I can wait. Some of the best things are surprises. Hey, Mon Lapine? Young Bunnix asked. Actually, it's just Mona now. Mona told her. I'm pretty sure I'm not the official bunny miraculous holder anymore, so it's Mona. Blanchette. Back to my maiden name. She gave her a small smile. Okay, Mona, I was wondering, how will you turn back into, well, yourself? Your miraculous is broken. Oh, no problem. If it isn't too much trouble, can you please detransform and hand me your miraculous? I promise I won't keep it. Uh, sure. Fluff. Counterclockwise. And with that, the blue light covered Bunnix and she detransformed back into Alex, holding the camouflaged Miraculous in her hand as Fluff floated next to her. Beginning to tear up again, Mona smiled at Fluff. Hello, my dear Fluff. But before she could finish the sentence, Fluff twirled excitedly and then flew right onto Mona's chest, hugging her. Lost, lost, you are so lost. I knew you, but couldn't see you. Mona, who never was, but is again, my friend. Mona gently hugged her back. It's good to see you too. And thank you for lending me your power that last time so that I could see who my ancestor was. You were the real MVP. Was that me who did that? I don't recall. It was so long ago, or maybe only a little while ago. It was probably me since that makes the most sense. You're welcome, most welcome. I can't believe you're here. Fluff happily cried. She then turned around to face Ladybug. Most thankfulness to you, Guardian Ladybug. Trustworthy in all timelines. Ladybug blushed. It was a team effort. Of course, of course. Thank you to all. Mini Alex, you're miraculous, please. Mona requested. Alex handed over her pocket watch, and once it was in Mona's hands, it instantly became charged and Fluff was sucked inside. Then Mona said, Fluff, counterclockwise. And with that, Mon Lapine detransformed for the final time, revealing her civilian form. That's better. Thank you. She gave the pocket watch back to Alex. I'm actually kind of curious about something, Kat began to say. What about your ancestor who saw Mona disappear through the burrow? 
That wasn't how she originally disappeared. Adult Bunnix grinned at him. Good observation, Kitty Noir. Fortunately, he was already pretty freaked out by what was going on, that he basically reacted in the exact same way he would have had Mona poofed normally. So no harm done. In any case, it's time for us to head out. She opened up two burrow portals. She opened up two burrow portals, one to her present, the future, and one for the young teens to return to their home. Mona waved to them. See you guys soon. They waved back. We promise to never forget you, Mona, Ladybug said. I know. And thank you. And I'll never forget the awesome teen heroes who saved me. Say hi to future Fluff for me. And make the most of your life, young Alex told her. I will. Thanks again for your help with Time Tagger. If you ever want to send us any more useful hints for future problems, that would be most appreciated, Cat Noir said. I'll keep that in mind. Wait, one more thing, Ladybug said. She reached out a fist and extended it to Mona. Staring at it for a few seconds, the woman understood and smiled. They all did a collective pound it. And with that, they all returned to their respective times. In the past, or the present, Alex gave her miraculous back to Ladybug until the next time they needed her help. They all said their farewells and went on their way, all feeling a massive amount of accomplishment. In the future, well, I can't say too much, but Mona was reunited with, or rather, introduced to this new version of her friends, and it didn't take too long for her to be integrated into the group. The dynamic was slightly different, but it wasn't too bad. It was an exciting kind of different. She'd never forget what she had, but she made sure to cherish what she has. In commemoration of this new life, she cut off a good chunk of her long hair as she embraced her future. With her connections and in rebuilding a life for herself, Mona was able to get a job at a local preschool as a teacher's aide. And on the way to the store one day, she ran into this timeline's version of her husband. Turns out that he's been so busy with his career as a firefighter that he never had a chance to get into the dating scene. Something about Mona inspired him to finally give it a chance. They hit things off pretty well. Mona would often get asked about the ladybug tattoo on the back of her neck, which she called her lucky charm, and she would just fondly say that she's a fan of the heroes of Paris. They changed her life and gave it back to her. As far as her commission from the future ladybug, let's just say that she might not be the bunny miraculous holder anymore, but with her experience and great sense of responsibility, a brilliant metamorphosis is soon to take its lilac flight. But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more. Guys, it's the end of an era. What era is that? The Ayla Bell reviews the awful mess that is the time travel mechanics and Miraculous Ladybug era. What's that? I already said I was done talking about that in my last time travel related video. Well, just like our friend who created Attack on Titan, I too shall have a second ending to this epic saga. Does... Does that joke work? I stopped watching Attack on Titan after the first season. I just heard that there were two endings, so please let me know if that joke worked. And no, I have no interest in watching the rest of the series. Besides, I know most of the spoilers anyway. Also, if you want to have some happy times after the sadness and sorrow of the main story, I recommend Attack on Titan Junior High. It's super cute and fun, and I wish there were more seasons. Anyway! Time travel in Miraculous Ladybug is a mess, and I've already talked about it so many times. In fact, I made this whole saga its own playlist. Yup, you can now watch the progression of me descending into madness as I try to understand and debunk the awful use of time travel in this show. Spoiler alert, the episode Cat Blanc made all of it a total mess. If you want to hear more, check out the videos on this playlist. So since I've spoken about this at length, you must be wondering what else I could possibly talk about. Well, stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell and I'm approaching my 100th video on this channel. So I figured I'd put a bookend to my first Miraculous Ladybug video. But Allo, the first time you talked about Miraculous was when you said it ripped off Shigokara. Okay, okay. Yeah, technically, that was my very first Miraculous-related video, but that video shared the spotlight with Shugokara. I'm referring to the first time I spoke about Miraculous on its own. But Allo, why not just continue the Shugokara comparison? It would be more poetic since that is the first time you even mentioned Miraculous. 
Sure, I could, but other than a few extra points that were made in the comments to further prove my point that Miraculous was heavily inspired by Shugokara despite Asterix refusing to acknowledge so, I don't think it would be enough to fill an entire video. Heck, I barely think that this is going to be enough content for a video, hence why I am padding the time out. In any case, what sparked this second finale? Well, the newest Miraculous Ladybug special was recently released, and it's still buzzing around the fandom, so why not add my part into the pond? However, seeing as it is me, I didn't watch the special, which had come to the surprise of absolutely no one. You know who I am by now. You understand my shtick. I don't watch Miraculous Ladybug. But Allo, you watch the movie. It's not the show, it's different, and a different canon. But you also watched the first episode of season 5! It was on mute the entire time. I didn't watch it properly, so I am still within the safety net of my personal meme. But Allo, why should you have any say in Miraculous when you've never watched it properly? Because I can still have my opinions on the facts that I do know. There's no rule against that. Plus, it provides a different perspective to the show compared to most who have a more personal relationship with it. And I try to not talk about things that I don't know about. I stay within the confines of my knowledge base. If you don't know me at this point, I know 85-90% to 90 of what Miraculous is all about and I know all major spoilers about the show and who all the characters that matter are due to reading transcripts of episodes, watching clips on Instagram and YouTube, reading and watching spoilers and related fan comics, and watching others' reviews. I've been sucked into the chaos of this show in the most unconventional of ways. Though I'm sure my situation isn't all that unique, because I know a lot of people out there haven't watched or don't watch Miraculous, and yet they do watch reviews and stuff of it. The reviews are just entertaining. <laughs> but I have gone beyond that, considering I have seen clips and transcripts and, you know, everything else I said earlier. So yeah, I may not have watched the special, but I know the major spoilers from it and have watched some of the scenes. On mute. Anyway... <laughs> What does this special have to do with time travel? Well, a commenter, sorry I forgot who you are because this was a couple months ago, asked me my thoughts on this special that hadn't come out yet considering it took place in an alternate universe. They specifically asked how it would fit into my views of time travel in Miraculous since I claimed once and for all that Miraculous was operating under a closed loop time travel theory and not a multiverse. Well. That got me thinking, and here's my answer. I'm still right. Miraculous does not operate under a multiverse theory as evidenced by Bunnix beginning to disappear in Cat Blanc. But then you might be asking, how does this special exist if multiverses aren't a thing? Well, my friend, I'm here to present to you the idea that there are two different types of multiverses. There are time travel multiverses in which there are different universes that branch off from one main timeline and are determined either by different choices that people have made slash could have made or come to be because of time travel meddling. And then there are parallel universe multiverses that exist similarly but not directly tied to each other. These universes exist not because of certain decisions that were or were not made nor because of time travel. They simply exist. Sometimes they have things in common, and sometimes they don't. Think about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. And I'm talking about the movies, not the comics that inspired them. All of those universes have different Spider-People and different canons altogether. In one universe, Peter is the Spider-Person. In another, Gwen. And in another, even a spider who gets bitten by a radioactive pig. And yes, you can make the argument that the Spider-Verse is connected, considering the ramifications of breaking canon events, and you'd be right in that thought. But these other universes are not determined by different branches in one timeline, even if it seems like they were. You can't convince me that the one universe that is made out of Legos, or the one that is completely in black and white, happened as a result of someone deciding to have tea versus coffee in the morning. No. They are different worlds altogether that happen to share a special connection. Miraculous Ladybug's multiverse is this kind of multiverse. It's a parallel universe unrelated to time travel or a shared timeline. We'll call this theory of parallel universes multiverse isolated. Therefore, I'm still right about it being a messy, 
closed loop. If you're wondering what a closed loop is, it just basically means that any time travel hijinks that happen were meant to happen and will continue to happen in a loop. Any attempts to change things with time travel will result in you ending up with the past you starting precisely where you began. In this theory, time travel as an event was always meant to happen. It is a thing. It is a canon thing that happens in the timeline. This theory gives the illusion that one has the power to change their past slash future, when in reality, those changes aren't changes at all, since they were meant to happen and, regardless of your awareness or not, were already happening because the time travel is a canon event in the timeline. I really hope <laughs> that this makes sense. You know, just watch Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, okay? You're not affecting the future in the way that you think you're affecting it because you're actually doing precisely what you're supposed to be doing. If you're still confused, you can check out the season 2 episode entitled It's About Time from My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Miraculous's depiction of time travel is messy because the episode Cat Blanc contradicts this theory. This theory that was confirmed 100% in the season 5 premiere. Even Time Tagger, which came before Cat Blanc and has its own messy bits, has more consistency with the closed loop theory better than Cat Blanc, which, again, messes things up. Two time travel theories being used in one story is possible as long as both methods have different ways of being initiated. Like in MLP, the first evidence of time travel used the closed loop theory because the spell that was being used wasn't strong enough to change the future. Whereas the stronger spell was able to change the future and thus operated under the back to the future theory. Miraculous could have pulled this off if the two theories that were being depicted had different origins. And they had the chance to do so considering both the snake and bunny Miraculous have time powers. But no, the contradictions come exclusively from the bunny Miraculous. I actually have no qualms with the snake Miraculous. It's arguably the more powerful of the two, considering that one can actually change the future. Which is probably why it has the limit of two minutes. The Bunny Miraculous operates under the closed loop theory. Except for the one time that it didn't. And it's a mess. Anyway, again, the main thing I wanted to discuss was an amendment to a statement I made in a previous video. Now, I'm not taking back anything I said about Miraculous's use of time travel. But, I do want to fix how I approach the back to the future time travel theory. In that theory, simply put, if you go back in time and change something, then the future will be altered. Short and easy to understand. However, back then I said that this all took place on one timeline. But no no, it doesn't, it can't. For you see, if this all occurred in one timeline, then Marty would have nothing to worry about because he'd exist again. But Allo, that doesn't make sense. Let me explain. If there's only one timeline and others cannot branch off from that one and or even exist, then if one were to go back in time and, say, accidentally make it so that they don't exist because their parents never got together, then, theoretically, if they never existed, then they couldn't have been able to go back in time to make sure that they didn't exist. And thus, the change in the timeline can't happen since you don't exist to make it happen. In other words, the timeline will self-correct. Let's try to make this simpler. Sort of, it's, it's complex and it, there's, there's no level of explaining that will not make it complex. But imagine if you had eggs this morning and you decided you wanted cereal instead, you go back in time to make sure that you ate the cereal. But if you never ate the eggs to begin with, then you never would have gone back in time to tell yourself to eat the cereal. And so you'd never end up eating the cereal. The timeline self-corrects. This is the self-correction time travel theory, which I know sounds very similar to the closed loop theory. But the difference is that in the closed loop theory, you, or whoever is time traveling to the past, is naturally causing your current present to happen. The time travel is necessary for canon to happen. Whereas in the self-correction theory, nothing you do can change or influence fate. If you want to change something, you can't. I know, I know. 
this is also super confusing. At the end of the day, it's all theoretical and super fictional, so you can technically say the rules are whatever you like when you write. All I ask is for logic and consistency. Anyway, the self-correction theory operates in two different variations. Variation one is the one I already described where nothing can change via time travel no matter how hard you try. And variation two allows tiny, minute changes and even alternate routes that result in the same outcome. Variation two is best seen in the 2002 movie, The Time Machine. In this movie, a man goes back in time to try to prevent the death of his wife, but finds no matter how hard he tries, the timeline will correct itself and make sure she dies, regardless of how, at a certain time. In this version of this theory, there are certain events that are destined to happen, and will happen, even if the way that it happens is different than the original. If anything, this just shows that the theory can be super strict, and that nothing changes if you try to use time travel, or a little loose, in that a few details can change, but overall, things will stay the same when you use time travel. But either way, Back to the Future does not use this theory. It uses a different theory. In fact, it uses a multiverse theory. But then you must be asking how that's possible since Marty and his siblings start to disappear. In regular time travel multiverses, different universes branch off due to different choices that were made and multiple of the same character can exist. Call them variations, if you will. Well, in Back to the Future, there is one timeline and when you go back in time and change something, that timeline branches off into a different timeline just like in a regular multiverse. Except, the difference is that the original part of the timeline that got replaced by the new timeline starts to disappear until it no longer exists. That way, there still remains only one timeline. It's just no longer a straight line. I shall call this time travel theory the Jagged Timeline, or even the Multiverse Destroyed Theory. I really desperately hope that this all makes sense. And so, after all of my hours of making videos critiquing Miraculous Ladybug and its poor use of time travel, I have come to the conclusion that there are four different types of time travel theories used throughout stories. There's the closed loop theory, best seen in My Little Pony Season 2 Episode 20 or even Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. There's multiverse saved, as in there are different branches in the timeline that are preserved and thrive, best seen in Dragon Ball Z. There's self-correcting, best seen in The Time Machine, and then there's the Jagged Timeline, otherwise known as Multiverse Destroyed, best seen in Back to the Future. We can add in Multiverse Isolated, which is not a time travel theory, but I'll just add it. This is what we see in Into the Spider-Verse, as well as Miraculous World Paris, Tales of Shady Bug and Claw Noir. Besides, if the Paris special were time travel related, Little Miss Bunny thing over here would have intervened like she always does. But she didn't, because it's not. And once again, me amending my thoughts on how the time travel works in Back to the Future does not dispute any of my claims from the past. Because of Cat Blanc, the time travel of Miraculous is a mess, and I'm still pretty confident that I'm right on why. And with that, I can finally put an end to talking about this topic. If you've made it this far, then you are a champ. Go and get yourself a cookie, you deserve it. Honestly, I'm shocked that this video wasn't longer, but I am most definitely grateful from an editing perspective. In any case, this was a fun ride, and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Which time travel video of mine was your favorite? Do you think Miraculous handles time travel well? Do you think they'll use it again in the future? Comment below and let's get this conversation started. And remember, I'm the Artistic Alabelle, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more reviews, rants, and rewrites. But as for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.